much expected of Jesse Lingard, former West Ham man, of course, trying to do them damage this afternoon. Brennan Johnson and Awanii uh, play in front of him. West Ham in change kit, playing from right to left in the first half, attacking the Trent end to our left-hand side. They are all in black. White names, white numbers on the backs of their shirts and Declan Rice getting stuck in straight away. Strong challenge on Toffolo, wins the ball cleanly uh, and knocks it out for a throw. Fabianski fit to take his place in goal for West Ham. Vladimir Sofal and Aaron Cresswell, the two full-backs. Ben Johnson at centre-back alongside Kurt Zuma. Early attack developing for Forrest down the right-hand side. Nico Williams trapped back by Ben Rama. Ball comes off, Ben Rama goes out for a throw. Thomas Socek, Declan Rice in central midfield. Jared Bowen uh, trying to match what he did last season for West Ham. Wide on the right, Ben Rama on the left and four nows playing in behind Mikhail Antonio with Gianluca Scamacca, uh, the Italian sign for big money from Sassuolo uh, starting on the bench this afternoon. Ball's gone out for a West Ham throw, halfway inside their own half. David Moyes in the shorts this afternoon, Clinton. Wow, well, yeah, he's not, he's not in like, usually he has a tracksuit on the touchline or a few times last season we saw him in his brand new shoes, but yeah, I think it is a short stay. If I'd seen him, but then Steve Cooper, who I know well, he's gone for Chino, so I'm going to have to message him <laughs> later, but I don't think he wants to get his legs out, Ali. <laughs> Black t-shirt, 42 years old, Welshman, welcomed like a hero, as always, as he came down the touchline. Very understated, already complaining, actually, how long West Ham are taking over the early throw. Cresswell launched it down the left-hand touchline, Worrell heads it away, Ben Rama chests it down inside the Nottingham Forest half, and the ball goes out for a Forest throw on the right-hand side. Kilmarnock nil, Celtic 5, sees Celtic go uh, top of the Scottish Premiership on goal difference. Both Celtic and Rangers have played three games apiece. Rangers beat St Johnston by four goals to nil yesterday, and Naz Premji going to be keeping us updated on Middlesbrough against Sheffield United. Two championship games this afternoon, and uh, that one is the two o'clock kickoff. Two minutes gone, here come Forrest. O'Brien, measured pass out to his left. Our knee chases the ball. Can he keep it in down by the byline? Wins Donegan Forrest an early corner. David Moyes just questioning here to the fourth official Simon Hooper whether the ball actually had run out uh, and should have been a goal kick for West Ham. Oh, I need he. he needs to start well because it was a good sign in from Union Berlin and, and in pre-season by all accounts he hasn't been up to the races but I hear signing of Dennis they were they both brought up in the same city so that might help him as well Ali. 20 goals last season 15 of those in the Bundesliga for Awanii. Nottingham Forest looking for a first goal on their return to the top flight. Stadium falls silent as the corner comes in from the left-hand side. Good delivery, headed away to the edge of the box, knocked back in towards that West Ham penalty area, blocked and comes back out for Nottingham Forest to play again. Lewis O'Brien chased by four nows. That's a good ball. Here's Nico Williams on the left-hand side. Lingard dummies the shot with his right foot, plays it back to the left again. Williams tries a shot. It's stopped in the tackle, clever bit of footwork, plays the ball back into midfield, that's Mangala on his Nottingham Forest debut, or first start for the club. Worrell's high lofted ball to the left hand side, just over the head of Nico Williams, who's still out there on the left, slides in and wins it, and here come Nottingham Forest again, that pass is behind Mangala, Jesse Lingard into winner 50-50. And that is a throw in for West Ham inside their own half. You can hear the city ground is absolutely bouncing. Early goal at the Riverside. Here's Naz Premji. Middlesbrough nil, Sheffield United won. Sanderberg left hand side turn in the box and he drove the ball into the bottom corner. Middlesbrough nil, Sheffield United won. Nottingham Forest nil, West Ham nil. West Ham yet really to get any meaningful possession in the early stages here on BBC Radio 5 Live. Always available on the BBC Sounds app for you as well. If you're out in the sunshine this afternoon and you want to listen to the football, make sure you have the BBC Sounds app and you can find us live on there. Antonio twisting and turning, trying to slide a pass down the inside. Right channel, so foul chases. Nicely run out of play by Toffolo in that left wing back position for Nottingham Forest goal kick for the home team. Clinton Morrison. Yeah, he's coming and done well, Toffolo, because they originally signed Richards, but he's picked up an injury from Bayern Munich. So, yeah, and I think they want to strengthen in that area again as well. So then I don't think Forrest is um, finished with their signings, um, Ali. We were speaking about it before, but good start from Nottingham Forest. Our knee on the ball, driving forward, shoved in the back by Declan Rice. He felt he had to do it, concedes the free kick. 45 degree angle to the West Ham penalty area. 22 or 23 yards out, a chance possibly here for a strike on goal. Nottingham Forest in their bright red shirts in sweltering sunshine. White shorts, red socks, attacking the goal. Away to our right, Jesse Lingard is over the free kick for Forest. Then just 
casually moves away from the ball in his light blue boots and leaves it to Nico Williams. West Ham lining up a three-man wall. Both of these clubs beaten by two goals to nil on the opening weekend of the season. Forest away at Newcastle, West Ham up against Manchester City where Haaland scored both goals and Forest with the early pressure in this game. Williams holds his left arm in the air with his right foot, oh, balloons it, gets right underneath it, smashes it over the bar and goes behind for a goal kick. Bit of adrenaline, I think, yeah, rushing through the veins to be fair. He's not going to beat Fabianski from there, even if he tries to go direct. So he's got to give the defenders who have come up, the likes of Joe Rowe, a chance. So he should really be firing that into the far corner so the defenders and attackers can get um, across their defenders. But it's been a good start from Nottingham Forest. Yeah, good first five minutes. Nottingham Forest first home game of the season on their return to the top flight Fabianski all in yellow goal kick bounces on the halfway line Socek chests it down Lewis O'Brien comes rushing forward to take possession bobbles a pass into the path of Lingard Lingard chases Sofal clips Sofal's heels who goes down that has to be a free kick and it is and so West Ham will have a chance to clear their lines half past four this afternoon your second Premier League commentary of the afternoon here on Five Live and BBC Sounds is Chelsea against Tottenham and I expect 6.06 to be lively uh, again yeah, tonight I, I was driving home yesterday it was lively <laughs> last night let me tell you all them Man United fans Girl. calling up <laughs> Clinton I was at Southampton Leeds I got in the car yeah. And you know when you get in the car and you're listening to the radio and you know that the score's not far away, but you could tell something was going on. I was thinking, Brentford are ahead here, so there must be one ahead. And then you're thinking, I wonder if it's two. And then John Murray goes, it's 3-0. I said, what on <laughs> earth is going on? Uh, huge mistakes. Uh, yeah, a lot to sort out at that football club. Absolutely. Bottom of the Premier League. These two in the bottom three as well. Antonio, bouncing ball on the edge of the forest. Penalty area fouled by Lewis O'Brien. So now West Ham have a free kick just on the edge of the Nottingham Forest penalty area. It wouldn't quite come down for him. And Lewis O'Brien, I think, just panicking a little bit there. Clint sort of rushed in and felt he had to make the challenge before he got the shot away. Yeah, he did. It was good, a good strength from Antonio. Backed in um, to the defender well turned. And yeah, Lewis, Lewis O'Brien, he just thinks um, Antonio is going to... He doesn't need to, because you're right, the ball's not set for Antonio to have a shot, but it's eagerness, and obviously it's his eagerness, and he gives away the um, free kick in a dangerous position. Right, here comes the first sportsman's bet of the season. Yeah. Cresswell and Ben Rama stand over the free kick. Oh. I'll let you choose first. Oh, Cresswell. Yeah, that's, well, I'm going to have to go Ben Rama oh, now, but I'll let you I know go it's going to be Cresswell. Yeah, all day long. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. He's suited on his side, yeah. left-footed player as well. Yeah. So all right, I'll go Ben Rama. You can have Cresswell. Good man. I like, you're, you're I like very you, generous. <laughs> Cresswell takes three or four meaningful paces back away from the ball. Stares at the goal. Here he comes. Cresswell over the wall. Good hit just over the bar. Dean Henderson had it covered. Goal kick. Nottingham Forest. Seven minutes played. Forest nil. West Ham nil. Yeah, it was a good free kick. He, he, he got the power. He, got, he just didn't get the direction. But I think you're right. Dean Henderson would have saved it comfortably. Henderson pings it out with his right foot diagonally towards Nico Williams. Keeps the ball in play but gives it away. Declan Rice side foots it to Cresswell. First time on the half volley towards Antonio. Bumps into Worrell, but the ball is over him. And Henderson bowls it out underarm here to Musa Niakate. Another one of the summer signings. Floats a nice pass out to the left. Down the line from Toffolo. Awanee plays it back to Lingard. Chased by Rice. Dragged down by Declan Rice. You get booked here. You're right. Card comes out. Early booking for the West Ham captain. Robert Jones shows him a card, another free kick for West Ham. Yeah, it's just because it was a good um, good touch and Jesse Lingard got the wrong side of um, Declan Rice and he had to. I feel like he's had to clip him because he's going in on goal. I know they still had defenders there, but we've seen Jesse Lingard score from that position. But he has to be careful now, um, Declan Rice, because he's the one who will be in and around um, Jesse Lingard making them runs. Great start by Nottingham Forest. You'd think this one might be a little too far out for the shot although if Nico Williams strikes it like he did the last one it might just get down in time yeah to actually test the goalkeeper There's I think a... you're spot on there Al because he's <laughs> literally 15 more yards further yeah. back in <laughs> there's five of them in conversation about what they're going to do Brennan Johnson's one of them Lingard's another Nico Williams is there the captain's had a word as well Nico Williams bounces the ball twice in front of him like a tennis player getting ready to serve looks like he's going to take a very short run at the ball Forest nil West Ham nil live at the city ground here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Williams chips it up towards the far post. A little bit of confusion between the West Ham defenders. 
Cross comes in from Mangala, high towards our knee, and Fabianski has to tip it over the bar. That was heading for the top corner, not at much pace, but it was right in that top corner of the West Ham goal, and he had to be quick to scramble it away. Yeah, I think it was Nakate, the centre half, I think it was. Our knee, he was in the middle, but it's a good ball from Mangala, the other summer signing. He started ever so well in the midfield, and yeah, you're right. He ju he's just done well, Fabianski, to adjust his body and, and tip it over the bar. But yeah, it was a good header really good header yeah it was it might even have been a West Ham player yeah. that headed it in the end Ali I think it was corner for uh, Nottingham Forest nil nil against West Ham and it comes from the left a little bit deeper this one to the far post Zuma is up to head it away Lewis O'Brien underneath the bouncing ball Ben Rama jumps for the next one with Mangala falls for O'Brien Ben Rama's chasing back O'Brien shrugs him off kills a lovely ball in dangerous at the far post Fabianski oh. throws himself forward Nia Karte was there again this time couldn't get the power on the header no he couldn't and West Ham are struggling to um, clear it it's good play from O'Brien he got past Ben Rama he has to do better Ben Rama does because uh, for all good, he is good, good going forward his defensive work's not good enough but it was good defending in the end Nottingham Forest pressing high up the field Declan Rice under pressure from Awanee Emmanuel Dennis signed for £20 million. Cheku Kuyate is joined from Crystal Palace. The numbers keep growing at Nottingham Forest. Ali, good signing, you know. Yeah, very good. Because they know the Premier League. It's a hard league, but they've played in it. Especially Kiate. He's played in it many years. Jared Bowen on the ball for the first time this afternoon. Running at Scott McKenna. Just lets the ball run away from him. McKenna gets a toe on it. And he goes out for a throw-in to West Ham on the right-hand side. Forest nil, West Ham nil. Chelsea Tottenham in full on Five Live this afternoon at half past four with John Murray and Matthew Upson and then 6.06 to follow all the action Monday night club with all the debate as well with Mark Chapman and the team tomorrow night Nia Carte wins a header came over the top of Antonio to do so low cross into that Nottingham Forest penalty area McKenna is there to block eventually hacked away by Toffolo at the second attempt Zuma is having a good old wrestle with Awanee and the decision goes for the Nottingham Forest striker, so that's a free kick for them. Yeah, Awani does well there. He does well because Zuma's a strong boy and he gets his body in and he says, you're not coming through me. And that's what you'll need to do. When Forest are under pressure, you need your centre forwards to hold it and buy free kicks. Good play. It's going to be a great surname to go with as a commentator that when a goal goes in for Awani. You can really sing that one. Awani. Yeah, exactly, Clinton. That's what I'm thinking. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> Could it happen today? Near Carte. <laughs> Back to Henderson. Henderson with his left foot, the Forest goalkeeper, plays it straight down the middle of the field. Zuma and our knee going at it again. Hacked away by Sofal across the field. Picked up by Nico Williams. Loves a run down the right. Looks up. Whips a ball in. Our knee! Oh, we almost had it. Heads just wide and behind for the goal kick. Uh, it's a great header from our knee. He's so unlucky, but the ball in from Nico Williams is first class. They got a different wing back because the one who they had last season, Jed Spence, he loves to get forward more. But Nico Williams, not really as much, but he can deliver a great ball. Our knee, he's so unlucky with that header. Needed that to go in, didn't yeah, we? we did. It was the moment. We just spoke about it, literally. He must have been listening to us. We teed it up. Up, yeah. and he couldn't quite deliver good header great cross from Nico Williams I think Nottingham Forest fans will be extremely encouraged we were saying they were rather timid against Newcastle last week they're going at West Ham now that they've made a bit of a mess West Ham of the uh, the goal kick Fabianski went to take it once Brennan Johnson complained they've taken it again Ben Johnson plays it back to Fabianski who immediately thumps it downfield with his right foot he could have done that straight away obviously didn't see anything on and unlike David De Gea uh, didn't pass a, a, a teammate into trouble. McKenna wins a header inside his own half. Lewis O'Brien, little cushion pass on the volley to his former Huddersfield teammate Toffolo. Forward to Awanee. A little nod down from Brennan Johnson. Lovely pass from Mangala. Hit that at real speed on the half volley. Williams, great ball through. Awanee chasing Fabianski off his line. Grabs it just in front of him. Great run from Awanee. He's causing problems, but the ball from Nico Williams is first class. I have a needle pass and he just couldn't get there, but Forrest have started this brilliantly. David Moyes will be worried. Mikhail Antonio barged off the ball by Nia Carte. So some good physical battles to watch this afternoon at both ends of the field. Nia Carte against Antonio and Zuma against Awani. Antonio gets the free kick midway inside the Nottingham Forest first half. 14 minutes of absolutely whiz by here uh, at the city ground. Water break on its way at some point in the first half the players will certainly need that so foul standing over the ball with Jared Bowen for the free kick might just take it short between them whistle blows 
chipped by Bowen down the inside left channel. Awani is there, leaps, clears with his left foot. Bowen is able to keep that in play. Low pass back to Fournals. Fournals pass intercepted. Chance for Forrest possibly to come on the counter here. Ball intercepted by Declan Rice on the halfway line. Rice, pass forward to Socek. Awkward first touch, is able to keep it, plays it wide to Ben Rama. Ben Rama on his right foot. Back to Declan Rice. Might fancy a shot. Instead, rolls it to his right hand side. Fournals with the ball into the area. Williams heads it high in the air. Fournals jumps, nods it to Antonio. Antonio shrugs off the challenge this time of Nia Carter. Here's Ben Rama with the ball at his feet. On the edge of the box, goes for the curler. Henderson touches it. It's very nearly knocked in on the rebound by Socek. Goes out for a corner. There's another goal at the Riverside, Naz Premji. Middlesbrough level, Middlesbrough 1, Sheffield United 1. Lovely work from Isaiah Jones. Down the right, crossed in. Tuberak Pon with a tap in. Middlesbrough 1, Sheffield United 1. 15 minutes played here at the City Ground in the company of Clinton Morrison on 5 Live and BBC Sounds. Rip roaring start by the home team. Corner though taken short by West Ham. So foul. Curls a ball in. Stretching clearance from Nia Carte. Four nows. Heads that clearance to his right. Here's Sofal again. Just prompts a pass down the right for Bowen. Bowen with the cutback. Nia Carte's there again. Clears with his left foot. And West Ham just enjoying a little bit of attacking time in the game. Yeah, it was good play from Ben, Ron, uh, ben Rama sorry, on the left-hand side. He'd done ever so well. Coming side, Nico Williams bent it. Henderson made a good save. But it just looked like Suchek couldn't get his body sorted out at the far post. Because he would have had a tap-in. And in the end, McKenna done a um, good defending. Six goals for the Czech international last season. A fabulous ten goals from Socek in his first season in the Premier League. He was very nearly in the right place at the right time. Mikhail Antonio dragged to the floor by Nia Carte. He's Free fouled kick. him about four or five times. He can't keep getting that much, that tight to Mikhail Antonio. That's what he wants. In the end, he's going to get booked and he's going to be in big trouble. Gianluca Skamaka sitting on the bench for West Ham. It was noticeable last week in the game against Manchester City. He did get a good long run out. Came on with half an hour to go, didn't he? He impressed me, to be fair, Ali. He won a, yeah. I think that both of them could play together at times as well. That will be a handful. Bowen's offside. The flag goes up. Do you know what, though, Clinton? With the five substitutes this season, I think we have to get more used to players who are actually just going to play 60 minutes games you know and then use come off, and, then and then use come off. yeah 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 and i do think it benefits the top teams because their squads are really packed with superstars so you saw it yesterday at man city making a lot of changes foden came off at half time didn't That's he what i mean yeah yeah so and then they can bring on someone like jack Grealish. yeah <laughs> yeah slightly annoying as a fantasy football manager yeah i know i've tried it this year to be fair <laughs> and i captained yeah i captained harland he let me down and i should have captained jesus i got him in my team <laughs> yeah well we got we got to get you in the league yeah i'll get me in the league i'm on it we now will. mate i'm on it okay <laughs> fantasy 606 code to join ah rsf2 fantasy 606 podcast as always available on the bbc sounds app and clinton is going to be in the league. We're approaching about 30,000 people. Oh, wow. Um, in yeah, the league definitely at the moment. So come in it'll be a good oh. win if you get there. Our knee flag goes up. No way. He was battling with Kurt Zuma. Now, has that been given for offside or is it for a foul on Zuma? He's given for a foul because he was behind. He was yeah. behind. He was behind Zuma. Awanihi, but he's done well. He's a handful. It's the first time I've seen him, Ali, and he's causing problems for Kurt <laughs> Zuma. <laughs> I love the strikers' reaction. No way. <laughs> Declan Rice steaming forward for West Ham, all in black. It's going to be a very warm colour to wear this afternoon. Cresswell, well, that's a dangerous ball across the face of the six-yard box into the arms of Henderson. Antonio threw himself and couldn't quite get the contact he wanted. 18 minutes gone in the first half. Nottingham Forest nil, West Ham nil. O'Brien chased by Fornals. Fornals wins the ball for West Ham. O'Brien comes chasing back. Bowen's got it. O'Brien does really well. Sticks to it, gets a foot on the ball. And then McKenna brings it out from defence. Fouled by Socek. And that is a free kick for Nottingham Forest. He has to do more Bowen because I watched him last week against Man City and he wasn't as Jared Bowen that we saw last season. I know it takes a bit of time and it's only two games, but... I want to see that Jared Bowen that's flying that was doing it last season because it's a big few months for him if he wants to make it into that World Cup squad. Yeah, that is that is coming around the corner very quickly uh, uh, as well. Here's Joe Worrell up towards the halfway line. Brennan Johnson not really been able to, to get into this game so far, gets I, a touch. I always said I wanted to see him in the Premier, Premier League because I know he's a big talent, but what I saw in the Championship, sometimes he doesn't work hard enough. Right. And I've just seen there Gareth Southgate sitting next to Christian Karrenberg. Great spot. <laughs> Flick on from Awanee into the West Ham area. Half cleared. Here's Lingard. Lingard, corner of the box, drives it low. Awanee stretches and inches away from getting a foot on that and possibly 
scoring the opening goal of the game. Manager Steve Cooper applauds his team. Yeah, it's good play, and I think Lingard does that. He actually drills it across, and Awanihi is thinking, go and just slide in and get a foot on it. And then you've got Toffolo coming in at the back post, but it started well. Awanihi could have probably have had a couple of yeah. goals already. He's probably inches away oh. from it. Oh, he's so unlucky. It's interesting watching sort of Lingard size up his options there, whether he's going to go for the little sort of slide roll pass, whether he's going to try and whip one into the top corner. In the end, decided to drive it low and hard, and it very nearly was exactly the right decision. Forest nil, West Ham nil. 20 minutes played in the first half. Full commentary of Chelsea Tottenham from half past four on Five Live and the BBC Sounds app this afternoon. Here's Cresswell. Cresswell in a bit of space on the left. He's able to just stab a ball to Ben Rama. Ben Rama takes on Williams on the outside, gets across into the far post. Behind all the West Ham attackers, runs to Sofal, another cross comes in, deflected. Antonio chases, gets his body in the way and makes sure that West Ham get the corner. Yeah, it's been, it, and you can see West Ham are a threat in particular down the left hand side with Ben Rama. He looks like he wants to go and take on Nico Williams and prove a point because he knows his place is under threats because they've just signed Maxwell Corney. Yes, yes, forgot to mention him in the team news actually. Maxwell Corney signed from Burnley back in the Premier League this season and amongst the substitutes, one, two, three, only six outfield substitutes actually named uh, by West Ham on the bench for this one this afternoon. Bowen with the corner, swinging to the far post. Zuma was there, but Henderson got there first with a very important right hand to palm the ball away. Ben Rama chases it out to the left wing for West Ham, moves into a, a small welcoming strip of shade and lets it run out for a throw. Cresswell jogs slowly forward and actually Clinton, that's not a bad tactic in this heat, is it? Take your time in, oh, on yeah. the restart, slow it down. Oh, it's de yeah, because we're hot up here and yeah. they're hot running around playing in it. Cresswell curling, ball in, too close to Dean Henderson. Bowls it out underarm very precisely to find Aurel Mangala. The Belgian wearing number five for Nottingham Forest, runs up to the halfway line, plays a one-two with our knee, then the run from Brennan Johnson, finds a bit of space and he's dragged Zuma out to the right of West Ham's defence, cross in towards our knee, grabbed at the near post by Fabianski. Fabian he looks good, sorry I'll to interrupt you, he looks good Mangala, the midfielder, he looks good on the ball, he's winning interception, he, he looks good for Forrest in there. Well to come in for Jack Colback, yeah, Steve exactly. Cooper obviously likes him, Yeah, because Colback has been brilliant for them last season. It's quite an open game isn't it? Yeah it is, lots of space in there, but it's going to be like that because you're going to have tired legs the yeah. further the game goes on. Socek, striding forward for West Ham, out wide to Sofal. Sofal thinks about heading for the byline. Can't get past Toffolo. Passes back to Socek. Here's Jarrod Bone with his back to goal. Lays it off to Sofal. Trips over the ball. Forest fans enjoyed that. Toffolo clears it down the left hand side. Awani is the first to react. Fancies a run at Kurt Zuma. He's got Zuma backpedaling. Then looks up. Curling ball. Can't find Brennan Johnson. One bounce into the arms of Fabianski. It's 0 0. Yeah, he didn't think he could beat Zuma there, Awanihi, so he just tried to lay it off. But yeah, it was good defending from Zuma because he said, you cannot race me, but he didn't. I wonder if Ben Johnson and Kurt Zuma probably unwisely are thinking, thank goodness me, we've got Erling Haaland out of the way. It should be a bit easier this afternoon. <laughs> Awanihi is not making it any easier. You're right, he's just, a, he's just as, a, as much as a handful as Haaland is. Bowen for West Ham on the ball inside the Nottingham Forest half. So foul towards Bowen. Crisp first time layoff to Socek. A little bit of triangulation passing from West Ham on the right inside the Nottingham Forest half. Socek to Fornals gets involved. Strong sliding challenge from Toffolo. Saw his opportunity, takes the ball. A little bit of Bowen as well. And that's a throw in for West Ham on the right in an attacking position. It's just They'll have their jinx break now, won't they? Coming up, isn't it? Because we're midway through the first half. Yeah. Sounds to me like you want one. Clinton, you got a drink with you? No, I'm all right. Okay. I went downstairs and they said the water's up, so that's what I got a complaint to make to Nine and Four. She can't run out of water on a <laughs> hot day like this. So I'll be giving Steve Cooper a text message and saying, he, he told me to come to the game. I've come to the game and you run out of water. <laughs> Bit of an issue. Bit of an issue when conditions I'm all right. I'm are like this. Now, we're absolutely fine in the commentary yeah. position here and enjoying the action this afternoon. Forrest trying to play out, have lost the ball. They're in no danger at the moment, though. Here's. Ben Johnson, high floated ball over the top towards Jarrod Bowen, heads it to his right, chases his own header and gets there first, runs away here from Toffolo, 25 yards out, spots Cresswell advancing on the left hand side, Cresswell slides it down the line to Ben Rama, two red shirts in front of him, the West Ham man stops for a second, back to Cresswell, first time cross, into the far post, free header straight at Henderson, good chance for Thomas Socek, 
couldn't quite take it. Let's check in at the Riverside Stadium. Nas Premji. Middles for one, Sheffield United one. Drinks break here. Tuba Akpon nearly made it 2-1 with a, a volley just over the bar from outside the box. There's been words as well with Chris Wilder and one of his old players, George Bollock. They've been having a lot of conversation. And let's just say it's not friendly, Ali. Middles for no. one, Sheffield United one. Three o'clock kickoff in the Championship this afternoon. Blackburn at home against West Brom. Blackburn looking to make it three wins out of three would go above Hull and Watford with the win they've beaten QPR at home Swansea away at home to Steve Bruce's West Brom who started with a couple of draws this season uh, Lee Blakeman will keep us posted on that one right here's the drinks break 25 minutes in of the first half if you have just tuned in you've missed a good, a good game of football so far Clinton Morrison it's it's nil nil and Nottingham Forest as we said at, at, at the top of the show, a little bit timid last week, have, have really stepped it up this week. Yeah, they? they've been on the front foot. You can see Steve Cooper's had them working and training, and they're causing um, West Ham a lot of problems. West Ham still look a threat just before we went to the drinks break. Suchet's got to do better than that. Yeah. The ball in from Cresswell's fantastic. He's six yards out, Suchet. That's his strength heading, and it's just a comfortable save for Henderson. But yeah, this could go either way, to be fair. There's a lot of chances being created. It's a good game of football. Match of the day two tonight is half past ten on BBC One. Jermaine Genus and Farrah Williams alongside Mark Chapman. And John Southall, our producer here, is pointing at the, the West Ham team talk and drinks break. I can see David Moyes deep in conversation with Mikhail Antonio. Ben Johnson using a cold flannel to towel himself down. The two centre-backs having a, a conversation as, as well. In fact, it's cold towels all round amongst the Nottingham Forest players on the back of the neck. Yeah, you need it. In conditions like this, you do need it. It is hard out there. So, just about ready to get back underway uh, again. As I said, Monday night club tomorrow night, always well worth uh, a listen. In terms of the roundup of today's action, the Football Daily podcast, if you don't already subscribe to that, then that's something on the uh, to-do list this afternoon, available for you. Uh, by the close of play this evening. First thing tomorrow morning, if you like to listen to your podcast, just subscribe to the Football Daily uh, on the BBC Sounds app. And actually looking at Mikhail Antonio out there reminds me as well, the Footballers Football podcast back this season. So that is Mikhail Antonio and Callum Wilson, two Premier League strikers taking you right behind the scenes. Always a good listen as well. And also available for you on the BBC sounds out. Back underway, Fabianski's clearance downfield. Antonio jumps. The ball comes off a combination of him and Nia Carte. Cresswell has it on the left for West Ham. Down the line it goes to Ben Rama. Plays it infield to Bowen. Nico Williams stretches and then tumbles on the floor with the ball between his feet and rolls out of the challenge. Comes away with it and then tries to fire it forward. Declan Rice chests it down. Half-hearted shouts from handball from the Forest fans. First time ball for Ben Rama. Couldn't find Bowen. Lewis O'Brien on the spot for Nottingham Forest. They've got the ball and they play it across their three-man defence. Scott McKenna goes wide to Harry Toffolo. Back to McKenna again. McKenna across to Nia Carte. Antonio puts the pressure on for West Ham. Mangala and Nia Carte play a quick one-two. Is there enough on that back to Henderson? Just enough. Henderson takes a touch, runs past Antonio, drills the ball downfield. Brennan Johnson at full tilt chases that won't get there in time. No, yeah, you thought Neon Carter's back pass is a bit short, but Henderson took a good touch. Tried to play a ball over the top to Brennan Johnson, but that would have been a good race for Ben Johnson. Declan Rice turns it round the corner first time. Knew exactly where Socek was. West Ham playing out from inside their own half. Socek does exactly the same to find Bowen. Back to Socek. The ball is behind him. Managed to get a touch on it, then tackled by O'Brien. O'Brien's done well in that midfield role. So yeah, him and, Mang him and Gala have done well in it. They broke up attack and kept it simple. And Suchek, 4 nails. we haven't even mentioned 4 nails. struggled to get in a game and get on the ball. Dean Henderson, long high clearance downfield. Zuma wins the header. Mangala stoops to nod it to Jesse Lingard. Lingard is able to get his foot on the ball, face up against Declan Rice, rolls the pass past him. Our knee... Lays it off to the left to Toffolo. Lingard has stayed wide on the left. Has the ball at his feet. Lingard against Rice again. Clever pass to Brennan Johnson. Inside the penalty. A curling shot. And Fabianski running to his left. Plucks it out of the air. Yeah, good play from Lingard. Finds little pockets. Getting a few boos from the West Ham fans. <laughs> Probably because he didn't sign there. But yeah, he's linked the play up ever so well. It's unlucky from Brennan Johnson. But that's what you want to see. Brennan Johnson coming in off the wing. Don't just hug the right touchline. Sorry. 
Fabianski drops the ball at his feet, clears with his right foot. <laughs> Nia Carter again in that wrestling match with Antonio. Antonio's livid. He feels he should have had a free kick. Actually, the ball has run in West Ham's favour. They've got it on the right. Antonio makes a run to the right wing. Sofal brings it infield. He's never scored for West Ham. Here we go. Well, he's not going to score like that. Awful bobbling drag shot. Good 15 <coughs> yards wide. And behind for the goal kick. We keep teeing them up for great moments in the game. They keep letting us down, Clinton. Well, you're right, Ali. You said he'd never scored. It didn't look like he was going to score when he lined up because there was so much space. He didn't want to drive in it. Then the fans were telling him to too yeah. far and he drags it wide. It was a poor shot. 72 games and counting for Vladimir uh, Sofal. Fabian Scher, it was, a, it was a similar position from which Fabian Scher rocketed one in uh, against Forrest yeah, last that was week. A great strike, wasn't oh. it? Oof. You can see Frank Clark. Uh, is in the crowd amongst the famous faces uh, here this afternoon. Nottingham Forest finished third in 1995 uh, under his stewardship with Stan Collymore scoring 22 goals uh, in the league that season. Of course, part of the famous Forest team in the late 70s. European Cup winners uh, in 79 and 1980. League title winners the year before that in 78 to get them into the European Cup came up from the second division won the title the next season didn't have to make 15 new signings though slightly yeah, different slightly times. different yeah. half an hour gone Forest nil West Ham nil Brennan Johnson with the press for Forest but Ben Johnson has plenty of time to play the ball back to Fabianski Fabianski with his right foot launches it high diagonally to the right McKenna is able to time the run forward heads it away only as far as so foul up towards Bowen. Bowen strokes it to four now. First time ball to Socek. Looking for the one-two with Antonio. Clipped into the box. Oh, slightly awkward for Henderson. Ball is loose in the penalty chair. And free kick is given to Nottingham Forest. As Socek went diving in yeah, to try I think and get he, on the end of the one-two. I think he, he, he thinks Socek's pushed O'Brien into Henderson. That's why he's given the decision. Uh, free kick taken by... Dean Henderson to Worrell quickly on to Nico Williams Ben Rama is harrying and hustling there back to Henderson Henderson spoons one high in the air Cresswell heads it forward bounces once Forrest stand off Fornals there Mangala gets a block on the pass Fornals gets a second go finds Cresswell Cresswell not much pace on the pass there Ben Rama oh step over nearly did Nico Williams does him at the second attempt here he goes down to the byline here's the cutback clever from Fornals onto the right foot lays it back so far with a low drive that's blocked <laughs> it don't look like he's going to score oh, he's not even hit that with any conviction Nottingham Forest on the counter laid off by Brennan Johnson to Lingard our knee is he onside oh, one on one with Fabianski he's goes offside. through Fabianski gets a touch and then the flag goes up you called it Clinton oh, he was offside it's annoying because you can see that he's not holding his run I think he wants the ball earlier from Lingard and I don't know why. Look at David Moyes. He's saying to the linesman, "Could you get? You could get your goalkeeper injured, but you can't blame him because that's the letter of the law." Fabianski went off injured exactly last weekend. I think the rough translation of that is "stick your blooming flagger." Yeah, is what David Moyes basically, is saying. Basically, but that's that, the, the rules are they've got to wait and let it go on. But I think it's a silly rule. If I'm being honest, Ali, because someone will get injured. Oh, David Moyes. And temperatures above 30 degrees centigrade he's reached boiling point there hasn't he yeah he has he is absolutely fuming and and the assistant referee is right in front of him now and getting an absolute earful from david moyes free kick taken by fabianski for the offside and there's an offside given against jarrah bone so that'll be a free kick for nottingham forest cool i would not want to be on the end of that tongue lashing yeah <laughs> oh dear he's going to sit down to cool off now He's a lovely man, David Moyes. I've shared a commentary box with him on a few occasions, but that that, ooh, that, that got him going. Forest nil, West Ham nil, five live and BBC Sounds, 12 minutes remaining in the first half. The conversation continues here with the fourth official, Simon Hooper, but David Moyes quite wisely and has, Kev, has Kev taken Nolan's the Kev always got something to say. Let me <laughs> yeah. tell you, I know Kev, he, will, he, he won't give up. No, he's <laughs> going the slightly more polite <laughs> diplomatic route. I know the gaffer's blown his top, but we're annoyed. And David Moyes just cooling off in the dugout. Conversation still continues. Throwing for Nottingham Forest. Attacking position on the left. Steve Cooper very wisely in his technical area, staying out of it. Lewis O'Brien, ball at his feet for Nottingham Forest. Looking for that first goal back on their return to the top flight. Is it going to come this afternoon? Next up for them, Everton away next weekend McKenna nice first time ball our knees offside high cross with his left foot doesn't matter 
West Ham will have a free kick. Oh, and he's got good movement, you know, um, um, Ali. He just has to work on the timings of his runs because he will get in there, but he looks really sharp for his first start and that he's, he's caused West Ham a lot of problems and he's still raw and it's still a new league that he's coming into but you can see there's great potential in him. So free kick West Ham, they've tried to move it about 15 yards further forward, not getting away with that one. Referee's pointing to his watch saying you're not wasting any time here because the clock has stopped and Fabianski spins the ball forward, just puts a little bit of backspin on it, stops dead in front of him, just outside his penalty area. Forest nil, West Ham nil, Sean Dyche uh, in amongst the spectators at the city ground this afternoon, looking very relaxed. Yeah, he looks like he's not managing at the exactly. moment. Exactly. No stress, no pressure, just enjoying life. But he'll get back into work very soon. Reminding us on the screen as well, a youth player at Forest in the uh, in the late 80s. Awani looking for a forward ball to Brennan Johnson. It hit his heels and West Ham have a chance to, to bring it away. Talking about famous faces uh, in the crowd. We'll bring me on to a, a tail in just a second when we get our next break in play. Forest nil, West Ham nil. Rice to Fornaus. Fornaus, good ball down the left. Ben Rama's got Worrell backpedalling into the penalty area. A little step over. Worrell stumbles. Still Ben Rama. There's the cutback. Hits Bowen. Hits him on the thigh. The ball loops up in the air. Chance for Forrest to clear. Bowen was just hoping it might ping off him and end up in the back of the net. No, nothing he could do to really try and put a finish on no, that. No, but he's been good, Ben Rama. I think he's been West Ham's best player, attacking player. He's caused Nico Williams and Joe Warrow a lot of problems in there. But yeah, Bowen couldn't adjust his body. He was, too, he was fired too hard at him. Ten minutes remaining in the first half. Middlesbrough won, Sheffield United won the latest from the Riverside. That also kicked off at two. Celtic, top of the Scottish Premiership on goal difference with a 5-0 win away to Kilmarnock at lunchtime today. Full commentary on Rangers against PSV Eindhoven live from Ibrox in the first leg of the Champions League playoff round here on Five Live on Tuesday night. Uh, Socek miscontrol, ball goes out for a throw in uh, to Nottingham Forest. I thought last season he was disappointing and he started this season disappointing. Socek, yeah, I really? think he was disappointed because of the season that he had yeah. before that where he was outstanding. Had a really quiet season, so I know they brought in Flynn Downs, but yeah. Flynn Downs is more of a sitter where Declan Rice plays. I wonder if there's a bit of fatigue in there as well, actually. Yeah, a lot of football, you're right, you're yeah. right. Dean Henderson clears long with his right foot, and it's two headers that get it back to Fabianski. Ben Johnson heads it to his right, and Sofal nods it back to his goalkeeper, Fabianski. Last ten minutes of the first half. I think, actually, the game has got a bit stilted since the water break we were we were rattling along at a fair old pace with a real rhythm and they've not quite got it going since yeah then. and i think it's the heat as well maybe they're just saying have five or ten minutes and then go again after half time but you are right the drinks break it's just like dampened the spirit uh fabianski ball down the middle of the pitch near Carte wins the battle against antonio 50 50 then won by west ham Cresswell gives four nails a shout, pups up on the left. Cresswell back to four nails, strokes a lovely curling high ball to the right to find Sofal, brings that under control. Jared Bowen further right, thought about an early cross with his left foot, decided against it. Declan Rice inside the forest half, plays it to four nails, looks for a one two with Bowen. Sliding challenge from Mangala, battling hard, back up on his feet. Jesse Lingard in with a tackle, and Nottingham Forest win the throw. Uh, on the left so in terms of famous faces I, I'm pretty sure he won't be here this afternoon not going to get to that story just yet we're heading back to the Riverside Nas Premji Middlesbrough 1 Sheffield United 1 uh, honours even and it's just calmed down after the drinks break the only uh, incident of note Paul Heckingbottom the Sheffield United manager shown a yellow card by Andre Mariner for too much talk Middlesbrough 1 Sheffield United 1 Boris nil, West Ham nil. Scott McKenna under a bit of pressure here from Thomas Socek, all he can do is hook the ball into the Brian Clough stand, concede the throw. Throwing for West Ham. You've got time to tell this train No, do you know what I think? Really, this, this might develop. This okay. might develop into something, you know, I don't, don't want to be in the middle of it and then suddenly West Ham stick it in the back of the net. We've got to, we've got to time our run, all right, all as right. you used to, to do, do, to, to yeah. great effect. All right, then. <laughs> Let's see if West Ham can do something with it. Throwing towards Antonio, half cleared by Forrest. Ben Rama, central position, edge of the Forest penalty area. Low ball to Cresswell. Cresswell back to Ben Rama. Fancies it with his right foot. Shots blocked by Worrell. Antonio just tries to nick it and turn it around the corner. Shoots wide behind for the goal kick. Forest nil, West Ham nil. Let's deal with it quickly. So I don't think he'll be here. Who will be spotted so far? Frank Clark, Sean Dyche. I know Stuart Broad is in the crowd this afternoon as well. Billy Horschel, did you know? PGA yeah. Tour golfer is a West Ham fan. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Okay, so the fact of the day on drive, which is back again uh, this season, 
uh, I was asked why Billy Horschel became a West Ham fan. Very famously, a couple of years ago, turned up at the Open Championship with a golf bag emblazoned in West Ham colours and club crest. And the answer to the question was that Billy Horschel, one day cable television was broken at home, popped out to the DVD store, bought himself a couple of DVDs, and Green Street was one oh, of those yeah. DVDs he picked up, watched it and loved it. And that's where they, they were all West Ham fans. became a West Ham fan. I, I like that film as well, I'm not going to lie. Pleased to tell you, Clinton, I got it right. So Ian Dennis got his fact of the day right uh, the week before. I got mine right uh, in the first one, which piles enormous pressure on John Murray on Friday on drive time at 20 past five. So I'm looking forward to yes. hearing how he gets on. Ooh, pressure on Murray. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, John Murray at Stamford Bridge for you this afternoon. Chelsea Tottenham in full at half past four. Forrest building an attack down the left. Toffolo to Lingard. Lingard tackled by Bowen. Socek's only got Antonio to aim at. Just gets his body in the way. Uses all that strength to hold off Nia Carte. He's outnumbered in the end. Lewis O'Brien brings it forward for Forrest. Leaves it to Lingard. Lingard, little back heel to himself with the right foot. One-two with Mangala. Referee gets in the way. It'll have to be a drop ball and it will have to be given back to Forrest. The, the move felt like it was actually losing a little bit of momentum. Yeah, that, it was a bad pass from Mangala. That, it, helped, it helped it out hitting the referee. But that was a foul on Antonio. He's on the word, isn't Yeah, he? it was yeah. a foul. He, he held it up for about three or four minutes. He was all over him. Worrell to Nia Carte. Five minutes remaining in the first half. O'Brien. Forest have all their outfield players inside the West Ham half. Awanee, central striker, out wide left again. Doesn't mind running the channels and going out there and doing the job for the team. He's tackled. It goes out for a throw to McKenna. McKenna's throw in. Finds Lewis O'Brien. Little dribble from him. Then that cross in. Brennan Johnson, little glance oh. again. Nico Williams, oh, what a save, Fabianski. Saw the danger, closed the ground down very quickly and got his body in the way. Corner for Forrest. Yeah, it was. Um, they want Ben Rama to switch on and that's what he doesn't do. He has to switch on. Good touch from Brennan Johnson, but good save from Fabianski. Spreads his well, self ever so well. Nico Williams. Yet to score for Nottingham Forest, of course. This is only his second game. Yet to score in the Premier League, though, in 13 appearances. Came close there. He's going to take the corner. Closing stages of the first half. High, loopy one towards the far post. Declan Rice wins a header for West Ham. Fournals is there. Clever ball away. Ben Rama, good first touch. Sprinting hard. Oh, and he's through here. He's managed to get past Lewis O'Brien. Lingard still chasing. Ben Rama's got support on the right from Declan Rice. Rice up to the edge of the forest penalty area. Antonio desperately trying to get up there. Oh, Runs doing... into Mangala. Ben Rama strokes it home. And West Ham celebrate the opening goal. Now Nottingham Forest are complaining there was a foul on the edge of the box By because Antonio. Antonio bumped into Mangala. Ben Rama just played on. Wonderful finish into the bottom corner. And at the moment, barring a VAR intervention, it's Forest nil, West Ham 1. Yeah, I think they'll have a look at it to see if it's, it, it stopped any of the play. To be fair, it could have been accidentally. They will check, but the goal's brilliant. Ben Rama does ever so well to skip through two Forest defenders. But you see the referee saying on our monitor, he is checking. Yeah, surrounded by Nottingham Forest players at the moment. And we will have a look on our monitors here. So Declan Rice was waiting for the support from Antonio. He barges into Mangala. Mangala lies to down. To be fair though, he, he, he runs into him, but he's running straight on Mangala. So it's a hard one. You can see if it's disallowed. You can see, see if it is disallowed. He, he, he doesn't deliberately he push doesn't him deliberately over. Push His push momentum him. knocks he, yeah, him over, doesn't him. it? Look. So he's just running to him and he's running. And Mangala's trying to run. Do and wait, hold on. Is Ben Rama's foot just offside as well? There's about... No goal. Yeah, go and have a look. He's saying have a look. Go and have a look. So, yeah, he's going to disallow it. Right. But once you go to the monitor, Al, he's going to disallow it. Sorry, not no goal just yet being sent to the monitor. Very good point. So it's not the offside decision we're looking at here. That will be dealt with at Stockley Park. This is for the foul on Mangala. If the goal stands, I think Forrest were a little bit guilty there of standing oh, still. Al, let Should me have tell kept you on playing. From once he goes to the monitor, it's not going to stand. Have you ever seen them overturn well, it? Have you ever seen it? Well, I'm not sure. Let's wait and see. It depends who's in that VAR. Let's <laughs> wait and see. There you Antonio go. Antonio runs into Mangala. Clinton Morrison spot on. City ground erupts with joy. Ben Rama's goal is disallowed. Mikhail Antonio complains. But Antonio accidentally barged into Mangala, knocked him to the floor. West Ham continued. Ben Rama scored. VAR intervenes. Michael Salisbury, the man making the decision at Stockley Park. Forest nil, West Ham nil. Yeah, it's a harsh one because if it was, I would want the free kick if I was Forest. 
and if I wasn't Forrest, I would, I would say I'm just running in and there's nowhere I could run to. But the reason why they're saying that is because Mangala yeah. would have gone to Declan Rice. Yeah, OK, I see, I see what you're saying and maybe stopped him making the pass. He, he wasn't going to get there and cover Ben Rama. But anyway, the goal doesn't stand and we'll have a bit more added time at the end of the first half. Brennan Johnson's cross into the West Ham box. It's a hard one to call that, isn't it, Al? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is, absolutely. Clinton, that's why you and I are sitting here and not at Stockley Park. Nico Williams with a left foot drive. Fabianski gets his body behind it and makes the save. Really entertaining first half. Nah, really good, end to end. And the worst thing about it was a good finish from Ben Rana. And he started to run Ben Rana. And as I said earlier, I think he's been West Ham's most potent attacker so far. Yeah, it's a good point, actually, that, that Ben Rama managed to wriggle away, didn't he, on the left-hand side from a couple of challenges. Forrest would have been kicking themselves if he had been allowed to have that goal Mikhail Antonio is going at it the referee again felt he was fouled didn't get the decision the ball runs away from him to Dean Henderson Henderson plays it out to Joe Worrell Forest nil West Ham nil and Nia Carte the Forest centre back just slowing it down couple of touches back to his goalkeeper Henderson floats it to Williams volleys a pass back to Joe Worrell three minutes of added time at the end of the first half when every single person inside this stadium will need a well-earned drink. Ben Rama foul on Nico Williams' free kick for Nottingham Forest. Would, have, would it have felt a little bit harsh if West Ham took the lead, do you think, in yeah, terms yeah, of balance probably on the balance of play. To, yeah, but that's the difference in the Premier League. Yeah. You've got to be ruthless, don't you? And that's what West Ham have been. But, yeah, it probably would have. So I think going in at 0-0 is a fair result. But West Ham fans will be aggrieved by that decision. Two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Clever first time ball outside of his foot from Lingard. Brennan Johnson was on the same wavelength. Forrest have had to come back into their own half. Here's Joe Worrell, the skipper, to Mangala. Mangala very deliberately side foots a ball back to Nia Carte. Mangala on the turn. In the centre circle inside his own half. Worrell with a little bit of a Firmino no look there. Dummied it to the right and played it to the left. That was nice. Mangala. Wide to McKenna, McKenna quickly on to Toffolo, good build-up play from Forrest here, O'Brien lays it back, Toffolo still going into the penalty area, here's the cutback, oh Lingard scuffed it, and with Nii, it bubbles off his shins into the back of the net, and that looks like Nottingham Forest's first goal in the top flight this century, it was a really scruffy one, but the Forest fans won't care. Awani off the mark for his new club. It's Forest 1, West Ham 0. Awani! <laughs> no, and you know why? It's a good play from Toffolo. He does ever so well. Jesse Lingard is the most relieved man in the stadium because he completely he, he hits his arm. Um, Hits, he don't even hit the side foot, it hits him right on the hill and it falls to Awani here and that's what you want and somehow he bundles it in but when you want to score your first goal for your club in the Premier League you don't care how they're going. So happy for him because it, he's deserved it and worked ever so hard. Huge smile across the Nigerian striker's face pointing two fingers to the sky. Let's have a look at the replay again. Complete miscue by Lingard. Awani runs into it. One touch sort of knocks it up onto his leg and the second one bobbles it across the line oh, actually no. off the defender it's ben off Johnson, Johnson tries to clear it and it just hits him but that's what you got you got to earn your own luck he keeps getting in there he gets his luck oh. and it goes in well there we go West Ham thought they'd taken the lead just before added time at the end of the first half that goal ruled out by VAR Nottingham Forest first goal of the season first goal in the top flight for 23 years find themselves in front and listen to the noise inside the city ground. They've got to concentrate at the moment, though. Here's Ben Rama, who thought he had that goal for West Ham. Dribbling, tricky customer, finds Cresswell inside the penalty area. Williams is in there to make the tackle, brings the ball away for Nottingham Forest. And our knees off and running here. Oh, Williams nearly slides it through, intercepted by Sofal, just inside his own half. Rice plays it back to Zuma. Half-time whistle blows out. Have a listen to that. Standing ovation inside the city ground. Taiwo Awani with the first goal of the season for Nottingham Forest. Not a screamer, not a stunner, Clinton Morrison. But Forest have played well in that first half and deserve their luck. Yeah, and you don't care how the, um, the ball goes in the net. Scoring your first goal in the Premier League, Awani will be confident. And Forest have been good in the first half. The fans have played a big part, which I said. West Ham will feel, feel a bit aggrieved from the disallowed goal, but they deserve it for us because they've been outstanding in the first half. There we go then. Real drama in the closing stages of the first half. West Ham, the goal ruled out by VAR for the Antonio Barge into Mangala. Taiwo Awanii, last man off the field, crossing himself 
as he heads down the tunnel. What a moment. Forest 1, West Ham 0. Oh, the noise inside the city ground when that ball bobbled over the line. Clinton Morrison, we talked before the game about the number of new signings Nottingham Forest have made. A couple of notes I made in that first half. Toffolo, great clearance off the line, made the goal. O'Brien, superb in midfield. Williams with some lovely balls. Awini causes problems and scores the goal. Have these really not played together before? Yeah, I know, but that's, that's down to Steve Cooper. He's only had them a short time playing together, but he works. He's so detailed on the training pitch, and you can see it in today's performance. They were brilliant. And he, and he knew last week was a disappointing result against Newcastle. But going to St. James's Park was always going to be hard. I think if Forest stay in the Premier League, their home form's massive. And these fans have been excellent. But you're right, Crossy, the way they play together, interchange and stuff, it's been good. As soon as the West Ham goal was disallowed, Clinton, I looked straight to the technical area to see what David Moyes was doing. I suspect he was that angry he couldn't move because he did not appear out toward the touchline there. On social media, though, I mean, as you can imagine, opinion split probably depending on who you support. But Tracy says very lucky, uh, but deserved the goal with the amount of chances we've had. Uh, Abby says absolute stupidity from Antonio. There was no reason for that foul. Um, having had a few minutes, Clinton, thoughts? Yeah, probably when you look at it again, they probably get it right because he does. The only reason they get it right, and it's not stupidity from Antonio because I've been in that position before. When you're running at that pace, how are you going to stop yourself? You're just running into the defender and, and, he, and it's hard to try and stop when you're running that quick. And Mangala, the reason they, the, the reason they disallow it is because Mangala's the closest to Declan Rice. Yeah, you're right. And I think that, it's a great and, shout. And, and that's why they disallowed it because he could have stopped Declan Rice from playing the ball in. It, so in the end, they get it right. You're right. At the very least, he could have put Rice under pressure. Rice then had so much time to lift his head and pick the pass. As I said at the time, Steve, Forrest actually were guilty. Mangala was sat yeah. down and they all stopped. So had the goal gone against them, I think Steve Cooper would have been extremely annoyed about that. Yeah. I think that's the right call, yeah, though. Yeah, the right call in the end. Yeah. Uh, Josh says, impressed with Williams, Mangala, Awani and O'Brien. That half looked like they've taken well to Steve Cooper's system and style of play. Just one we should say for Forest fans is Clinton expertly picked out Christian Carambur. Uh, at his age, probably about 45, he's not Forest next signing, even though it's fitting to have a former Real Madrid yeah, player yeah. <laughs> at this great ground. He's one of the uh, sporting directors at Olympiacos, which is the other club that Evangelos Maranakis owns. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do just want to say before we go and find out what's happening at the Riverside that you need ways to describe the heat and the Nottingham Forest coaching staff were taking spare shirts, dunking them in water and putting them on the back of the players' heads. However, the way to tell in the commentary box, Clinton, is has Ali Bruce Ball abandoned his professionalism and worn shorts for the first time in his life? And the answer is uh -huh. no. no. To be fair, I, I actually had to ask someone. I, last week I wanted to wear shorts, went to West Ham, no, never again. It was so hot, I was sweating. So I asked someone, could I wear Who shorts? Who told you no? No, no one did tell me no. <laughs> I, I just wanted to be professional because I was thinking you can't walk around in, with your shorts on. But today, I had to put shorts on. I'm, I'm like Steve Cooper. Steve, I've, I've just, I've not got the legs for it. First time John Murray saw me in shorts at a football ground was at the uh, the Riverside for one of the England warm-ups for Euro 2020. And he came over and shook my hand and then he went, good grief! <laughs> And we will speak to John very, very yeah. shortly because he is at Stamford Bridge for full commentary of Chelsea versus Tottenham coming up at 4.30. One and a half here at the City Ground. Nottingham Forest lead West Ham by a goal to nil. Second half commentary on the way. Let's go back to the Riverside, though. Middlesbrough playing Sheffield United. We've reached half time. Naz. Middlesbrough 1, Sheffield United 1. United took the lead early. Sanderberg inside the box, right side. Lovely turn and shot into the low uh, bottom corner. Middlesbrough responded really well. A lovely move involving Dyke Steele and McNair, who fed Isaiah Jones. He cut back for Tuberak Pond to tap in from close range. Think Clinton Morrison about 15 years ago. It's been feisty at times. Two United players, Sharp and Norrington Davies, and their manager, Paul Heckingbottom, in the book. Riley McGree in the book for Borough. And I can confirm... I've gone professional, no shorts oh. here either. It's Middlesbrough 1, Sheffield United 1. I know you well enough to knew you'd stay professional to the end. That's Naz Premji. Right, coming up next, we'll hear from the Blackburn manager, Yondal Thomason, ahead of their game with West Brom. We'll be in Super League as well, where Hull play St Helens, and we'll make our first trip of the afternoon to Stamford Bridge. We'll do that after the latest news on Five Live with Stuart Clarkson. 
Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Thank you, Steve. Good afternoon. In the past hour, Sir Salman Rushdie's agent has said his road to recovery has begun after he was stabbed at a literary event in the US on Friday. Andrew Wiley said the author's injuries were severe and it would take a long time for him to recuperate, but says his condition is headed in the right direction. A group of charities and community organisations has called the rises in energy bills a national emergency and says the next Prime Minister needs to commit to more support to help the most vulnerable. The letter, which has been coordinated by the Joseph Rowntree Foundation, has 70 signatories, including a UK. Prosecutions against six people who attended a vigil for Sarah Everard last year have been dropped. They were due to face trial in November for breaking COVID restrictions after gathering with hundreds of others at Clapham Common in South London. Ms Everard was killed in March 2021 by the serving Met Police officer Wayne Cousins. Here's our correspondent Angus Crawford. What the CPS has said is that they're dropping the charges, dropping the prosecutions, because our legal test for a prosecution has simply not been met. That's what they say. Now, the Metropolitan Police, for its part, says that it had a really difficult job to do to safeguard the public and balance this with the rights of the individuals during the pandemic. A child died after going into the sea at Skegness in Lincolnshire. The body of a boy was recovered late last night after a five-hour search by police and Coast Guard. A murder investigation started after a man was shot in Walthamstow in East London. It happened around 9.30 last night. The victim is a 25-year-old man. There have been no arrests. Fire crews around the UK have had to deal with 150 serious wildfires in the past week, compared with around 250 for the whole of last year. The National Fire Chiefs Council is reminding people not to use disposable barbecues in the dry conditions. And government figures show more than 20,000 migrants have now crossed the English Channel so far this year. Around 600 people are known to have made the journey yesterday alone. BBC Five Live. This is Ben Shepherd And Chris Kamara. And we can't wait to bring you our new podcast. Cammy and Ben's proper football podcast. What can people expect, Cam? Big names, big laughs. I never wash my jockstrap if we won. <laughs> we went 19 games. <laughs> <laughs> so you told me to look after Frank. <laughs> he went, never go out with him again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just ridiculousness at its highest order. I quite literally fouled every outfield player. <laughs> <from the middle. laughs> you don't want to miss it. Cammy and Ben's proper football podcast with me, Ben Shepherd, and my mate, Chris Kamara. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sport with Steve Crossman. Well, what a first half for fans of Nottingham Forest here at the City Ground. Their first Premier League game back in the top flight for 23 years. They lead by Taiwo Awanee's goal to nil. Much more football to come. Let's get to the cricket now. Men's and women's teams in action in the 100. Uh, let's start with the men's Northern Superchargers playing London Spirit. Stefan Schemmel. Yeah, Superchargers haven't got going at Headingley, Steve. Only 39 from 40 balls. Two wickets down. Adam Lye for a duck and David Willey for 16. Spirit look well drilled as you would expect from a team led by Owen Morgan. They've won all three of their games so far. They've been excellent with the ball and in the field. Earlier on, Superchargers women won a tense game against the Spirit by five runs. The men are going to have to find an extra gear pretty quickly if they're going to ha- going to do the double. 39 for two after 40 balls. Uh, one of the other women's games going on is over the Invincibles against Southern Brave. Dan Norcross. Well, you've arrived just as the first wicket has fallen. This follows the third highest power play in women's 100 history. 43 without loss, the Southern Braves put on their first 25 balls. But they've just lost Danny Wyatt. They're six 63 for one after 37. Smriti Mandana, the uh, the Indian opener, has 41 from 22. She is batting exceptionally. It's a beautiful looking wicket. A lot of runs in this pitch, you'd think. But nonetheless, these are the two best sides in the competition. And the Southern Brave have got off to a fantastic start. 63 for one after 37 balls. Dan, thank you very much. Earlier in Scotland, Celtic hammered Kilmarnock. 5-0 uh, they're top of the SPL for what it's worth early days obviously goals scored currently separating them and Rangers Hearts face Dundee United that one kicks off in three minutes time uh, let's go back to the championship Blackburn the only team to win both of their opening matches about to kick off against West Brom head coach Yondal Thomason has been speaking about why he chose to join Blackburn I was ready for a new challenge I'm sure but I was also ready for something new I could have started immediately uh, at a uh, different clubs but I wanted to, to, to take six months off, uh, use a bit of time for family, but also to get inspiration and to choose a project, uh, which I think was the right project as well. I was searching for the project and, and, and Blackburn came and found me. So I'm very happy to start this project, which is a new project. Uh, and and we, are, we are very ambitious, but we are also very patient. 
So we need to create a, a sustainable team over time and build on this team. So, and we are building on this team every day. We work, uh, we work extremely hard uh, on the things you need to work hard if you want to be successful. Well, they haven't had to, they haven't needed to be patient so far. Have Blackburn Rovers? They started brilliantly under the new boss. Watching at Ewood Park this afternoon, Lee Blakeman. Hello, Steve. Good afternoon. Loads of traffic on the way here. I tell you what, as people were heading up the M6 to Blackpool for the summer holidays, but Blackburn definitely the place to be in this part of the world at the minute. Their tail of the tape in League and Cup played three, won three, scored eight, and conceded none. So an instant impact being made by the man we just heard from there. The first time they've won. Their they're opening two in the league since 1997. West Brom trying to stop them making it three. Their start has been decent. One all draws with Watford and Middlesbrough. They knocked Sheffield United out of the cup on Thursday too. Uh, to Super League now, leader St Helens face Hull FC. Our correspondent Dave Woods is at the MKM Stadium. Yeah, it's our time of the season, Stephen. After today, only four games left for everyone to play. St Helens win today. They go six points clear, uh, potentially six points clear. But perhaps more importantly, if they win today, they are guaranteed to finish in the top two, which is key, key for that grand final boost uh, bid. Uh, for Hull, well, they need to win to keep on the, the, the tails of a top six place. They are currently three points behind the, the top six in the playoffs. And the other game today, Wakefield against Wigan. Uh, Wakefield win, and that will ease their relegation worries significantly. Lose, they're still very nervous. And Wigan in second position, needing to keep the pressure on Saints. Dave, thank you. It is so hot and bright here at the City Ground. I'm just looking at one of the sprinklers in front of me as it spins round. And instantly you can see a rainbow within the curve of the sprinkler which is a, a remarkable thing to look at. Half-time here, Forest leading West Ham United by a goal to nil. Uh, after we've done second-half commentary, we will take you to Stamford Bridge for Chelsea versus Tottenham. That's where we'll find our correspondent, John Murray. Afternoon, John. Good afternoon, Steve. Sounds lively where you are. Very, very lively, and it will be where you are too. It will, yes. And, uh, you know, let's not forget, this is the start of a new regime now for, for Chelsea Football Club. The first home match since the big takeover in the uh, in the summer, which was completed just after the end of last season by Todd Burley's uh, consortium. And it's interesting today, he's very, um, I mean, he's been quite evident publicly, hasn't he, during the course of the summer. Mm. But um, he has a, a column in the programme. I mean, we never used to see anything like that from Roman Abramovich. Um, and also spectators coming into the ground today are being given vouchers for free drinks. And you can get a beer with oh. that voucher. So uh, so that that is a public relations initiative, obviously, by him. But in this column, some of the things that he says, Steve, Todd Bowley says, uh, quote, as one of the world's elite football clubs, Chelsea sits at the pinnacle of the game. We want to build on this remarkable history of success by acquiring quality talent across our senior youth and women's teams and exploring ways to improve the game day experience. So I presume that's where the free beer comes in. Yeah. And uh, he says, we are looking forward to Chelsea's bright future this year and every year. It's a, it's a real rallying call, actually. Mm. That's really interesting with the, the building and talent as well, because yeah. if we look at the really top clubs and the business they've done this summer, would Chelsea be the one who you think will look the most different on September 1st to where they are now? Well, judging from what we're hearing, that's entirely likely. And, uh, you know, wh whoever is acquired, reading between the lines there and also with what's been said, Thomas Tuchel, over the course of the last uh, week or so, it does sound as though, whether it's Aubameyang, whether it's uh, Frankie de Jong, whoever it is, it does sound that there will be further additions. You know, and let, let's not lose sight of the fact that in transfer fees so far this summer, they've spent around £170 million. So when the uh, consortium came in, they did say, didn't they, that there would be a fund for new players, there would be big signings, and, and they've backed that up as well so far. Yeah, if you wanted an example to follow, I mean, we don't necessarily know this now, but there's an argument in a few weeks we might be looking at the business done by Tottenham Hotspur. What, what a great opportunity just to see, you know, for the first time this season, two of the real heavyweights in a derby playing each other. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's a fascinating one because of the way that they started the season. Tottenham, obviously, a handsome win on that first Saturday and lots of excitement about the way that Conte's Tottenham team look. And I was at Chelsea, and yes, they won. And I think if you win your first match away from home at Goodison Park against Everton, you know, that is, you have to take credit from that. But 
In terms of the performance, there were quite a lot of shortcomings about Chelsea last Saturday, and they, they just got the job done. So I think, um, you know, in the light of the way that they started those matches, I think that makes this match all the more important than it normally would be. John, thank you very much. We will take you to Stamford Bridge when we're done here at the City Ground. Hearts won Dundee United. Shankland scored after one minute in that game. But that sound tells you, and you'll hear it a lot on Five Live this season, that we're ready to get back underway. Your commentary team, Clinton Morrison and Ali Bruce Ball. Yeah, lovely rousing rendition in the sunshine of Mull of Kintyre. All the Forest fans all the way around the ground on their feet. Scarves held along. That's a fabulous noise. Can only surely inspire this Nottingham Forest team. Goal in added time at the end of the first half. Has them in front against West Ham. Taiwo Awanii uh, signed for £17 million from Union Berlin this summer. Off the mark for his new club. West Ham attacking the goal away to our right-hand side. That Bridgeford stand end. They're on the attack early in their black shirts. Four nails will hit a right foot shot off the bar and down. Socek with the header. Brilliant save from Henderson. Antonio trying to get on the rebound and the ball gets away from him and West Ham so nearly have the equaliser first of all from Fornals because that shot had Henderson beaten. What a recovery from the goalkeeper though to save the Socek header. I said go Ali because I thought Socek there six yards out where Henderson's already dived having to get up. Great goalkeeping from Henderson. The first one's unlucky from Fornals. Henderson's beaten and it comes out but he, as a goalkeeper, look, bang, he straight up react. It's a great save. Fantastic save from Henderson. Use of the substitutes on a scorching day like today is going to be absolutely vital. No changes made at half-time. Both managers saving fresh legs for later on in the game. So Dean Henderson, sparkling form there at the start of the second half. Crucial save from the Socek header. He's in goal. In front of him, Forrest back three. Joe Worrell, the skipper. Musa Niakate, who's having a really good battle with Mikhail Antonio this afternoon. And the Scott... Scott McKenna, left-hand side of that defence. Nico Williams and Harry Toffolo, the wing-backs. Lewis O'Brien and Orel Mangala making his first start for the club in central midfield. Jesse Lingard has Brennan Johnson and Awanee uh, ahead of him in a two-pronged Nottingham Forest attack. West Ham, Fabianski in goal. Uh, back four of Sofal, Johnson, Zuma and Cresswell. Declan Rice has been on a yellow card since very early on in the game. He's alongside Socek. Uh, in the West Ham midfield. Socek has had the best chances for West Ham this afternoon. Uh, Bowen, Ben Rama, four nows behind Mikel Antonio, and I'm sure we're going to see a bit of Gianluca uh, Scamacca at some point uh, this afternoon. Watching him in the war, Mikel. Uh, Mikel. It's all right. <laughs> I, I wish. <laughs> Clinton, I should yeah. say. He yeah. is a big boy. He is, and he'll want crosses, and that's what West Ham do. Uh, that's Iwani, the goal scorer, trying to lay it off to Toffolo, who was on the run into the West Ham box. Ball played forward to Antonio. Nia Cartes followed him all the way into the West Ham half. Layoff from Antonio. Sofal's ball down the line finds Bowen. Bowen has Lewis O'Brien breathing down his neck. Bowen's got away from him, down to the byline. Right-footed cross, blocked by McKenna, and that's out for a corner to West Ham. West Ham have started this second half fast. They have. You can tell what David Moyes has said to them in that change room. First half wasn't good enough. Get, get out there second half and give me that performance, which I know you can. Blackburn, West Brom underway in the Championship. Middlesbrough 1, Sheffield United 1. Hearts, Dundee United underway in the Scottish Premiership. Celtic 5-0 winners at Kilmarnock earlier on today. What's the referee spotted? Referee, by the way, is Robert Jones. Just seen a little bit of argy-bargy push and shove inside that six-yard box. Lots of bodies in there. Dean Henderson could be under pressure here. Ben Rama's right on his toes. Jared Bowen's going to take the corner with his left foot into the near post this one. Headed away by Williams, chested down on the edge of the box, ball into the forest penalty area. Toffolo's there, happy to get anything on it and the ball comes flying off him and goes out for a throw into West Ham on the left. Steve Cooper would have known West Ham were going to come out in the second half. You knew that David Moyes wouldn't have been happy with that performance. So you've got to stay in the game, Ali, for the next 15, 20 minutes because it will be West Ham dominating. Throw in West Ham. So Forrest in the red shirts, white numbers on their backs, white shorts, red socks playing from right to left in the second half towards that giant Trent end on the banks of the Trent in sparkling sunshine this afternoon on Five Live and BBC Sounds. And at the moment, the Forest fans really enjoying their return to top flight football at the city ground. So foul, chests the ball down inside his own half, launches it high. Oh, Bowen had a little kick there at Toffolo. He was annoyed that Toffolo got in his way. 
couldn't get onto the through ball. Henderson bowls it out over onto Toffolo, pokes the ball infield. Declan Rice reads it, he's onto it quickly for West Ham. Whips it across field, low into the feet of Cresswell. Cresswell's first touch knocks it on five yards. He runs onto that, and Ben Rama plays it back to Fornals in central midfield. Here's Rice. Rice casually kills another pass to his right. So foul. Chests it down. Forest fans shout handball. So foul finds Fornals making a run into space. Low cross comes in towards Antonio. He's down in the six yard box. Challenge on him by Lewis O'Brien. Referee not interested in giving a penalty for that. Zuma heads the ball away into the Forest half down the right. Bowen gets away from Lingard. Bowen looks up and sees teammates to his left hand side. One of those Ben Rama. Ben Rama's got support from. Cresswell on the outside, just looking at all the movement, you know, in the lower tier in that Brian Clough stand. That's people with placards and programmes, fans, fanning isn't it? Themselves, fanning yeah. themselves, themselves. Because they're out so in hot. the sun. Yeah, they're out in the sun. Yeah, blimey, if you've not got the sun cream on over there, good luck. Here's Socha, that's handball. Corner of the box, he felt he was nudged, definitely hit his hand. Nottingham Forest get the decision. Steve was sort of looking for a way to describe the, the heat at half-time. It, it's thick, isn't it? It's almost yeah. like you can touch it in the air. It's I like the heat, but oof, this is a bit... Yeah, it's, they, this is difficult heat, this is. Yeah. I think it's going to cool down next week, isn't it? Al? That's what I hear, Clinton, yes. Yeah, OK. I'm yeah. not a weatherman, but... Yeah. No, 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 but we, tr we try and provide yeah, all do. services, we don't do, we? we do, On Five Live Sport. So please don't moan if it's still hot next <laughs> week. <laughs> well, why? we shouldn't be moaning because exactly. it's hot, should we? we I know. Should. Yeah, we moan when it's raining, then yeah. we moan when it's hot. That's right, exactly. <laughs> Five minutes gone, second half. Clinton Morrison, former Premier League striker, Republic of Ireland International with us here at the City Ground. Forest leading West Ham 1-0. Declan Rice busying himself again with action in the West Ham midfield. Lingard accidentally treads on his Achilles. Rice wins the throw in, hobbles away. Actually, Steve Cooper, a pair of black shorts on, he, he would actually be playing for West Ham this afternoon in the short sleeve black t-shirt. Header away from Scott McKenna. No sponsor on the front of those Nottingham Forest shirts, which is which is which is un it's nice to, to see. It's unusual. That it probably will unusual. change You're right. at some point. That's Ooh, a penalty. Ooh. Do you think so? Antonio's gone down. Near Carte. They he, both he, went for it. He's, he's got to stop wrestling him. Near yeah. Carte. That was in the box as well. So foul. Now that looks like a good ball. Near Carte's there to win the header. Toffolo with a second header up to Lingard. Flicks it round the corner with his head to Awanee. Oh, Awanee really stopped in his tracks by Zuma. Should have held on to the ball, says Trouble. Clinton. Four nows. Good ball to Bowen. Bowen with the cutback. McKenna's there. Slides in behind for a corner. He Forrester has to, under pressure. Yeah, here. he has to be reliable there. He's trying to turn into danger. you got to either get a free kick or give it back to Jesse Lingard. Seven minutes gone, second half. Chelsea Tottenham in full this afternoon on Five Live. Also available on the BBC Sounds app. If you're on the move, if you're out in the sunshine, John Murray, Matt Upson with the commentary, kicks off at half past four. Jared Bowen with his left foot, corner. Dean Henderson, easy take for him on the edge of his six-yard box. Wide open space for him to throw the ball into to O'Brien. O'Brien wide to Lingard. Lingard tries to knock it down the line for O'Brien. Sofal blocks it with his right foot. And then tonight, after the Chelsea Tottenham commentary, Chris Sutton, Robbie Savage, uh, with 6.06, taking your calls from around about half past six, probably just before that. Just had a little look at Chris Sutton's predictions column. So he's taken over from Mark Lawrenson on the BBC Sport website this season. OK. Suffered an unfortunate defeat uh, against a very good opponent in the first week. That was me, Mangala. Brennan Johnson on side. Oh. Snaps it in. Brilliant finish. Nottingham Forest have their second. It's the boy wonder, Brennan Johnson. And didn't he take that quite brilliantly? Saw the keeper coming, dinks it with the toe of his right boot, and Nottingham Forest lead West Ham by two goals to yeah, nil. And the West Ham defenders are looking at the linesman, hoping that he puts the flag up. But if this goal stands, it's good play from Mangala. I think he's been excellent in that midfield. He anticipates the knockdown from Zuma's header. And when once Brennan Johnson gets into that position, the finish is outstanding, Ali. He just dinks it over Fabianski. Fantastic finish. He's offside. He's offside. Ah. I thought he was. He's offside. He, he's just literally fractions offside, but wait, he's offside. Yeah, wait for the reaction. Here we go, up on the big screen in the corner of the ground, checking goal, possible offside. Clinton's seen it, he's called it, he's he right. He's offside, isn't he, or on my eyes? Yeah, he's offside. I thought, I, I thought he's offside. Lit, because you can see I think, Zuma behind, and you can see yeah. he's, he's just in front. It's his shin pad. What a finish. What a great finish. But look, Fabianski's took the ball because he already knows. Yeah, wait for it. 
There's going to be a, a real groan here from the Nottingham Forest fans. Brennan Johnson. It's a great finish, by the way. Sure, with a heel, no. What a finish. Yeah, yeah, his dad used to do that time and time again. Yes, I don't understand why it's took that long to make the decision. No goal. So Brennan Johnson's first Premier League goal is going to have to wait. Hull against St Helens in the Super League this afternoon. Early try, Dave Woods. Yeah, Hull have got it. Six points to nil. Jack Walker scoring after two minutes on the end of a sweeping move from left to right. Luke Gales kicked the goal, so early strike the hole. Six nil against St Helens. Brennan Johnson chasing a ball down the right-hand side. Thought he had his goal. Ruled out for offside by VAR. Nottingham Forest leading West Ham by a goal to nil. We'll take you to Ewood Park shortly. Blackburn, West Brom. Uh, is underway. Blackburn hoping to go top of the championship this afternoon if they can make it three wins out of three. Our knee, the only goal scorer then so far here this afternoon, plays the ball back to Nico Williams. Been impressive on his home debut for Nottingham Forest. Here he is wide on the right-hand side with his right foot. Gets the cross, wins the corner. Quickly checking at Ewood Park, Lee Blakeman. Blackburn nil, West Brom nil. The visitors on top. Furlong's just headed over. Swift's had a free kick, punched away. Blackburn have had a penalty appeal, waved away. Goalless, but it won't be for much longer, I don't think. Blackburn nil, West Brom nil. Corner then for Nottingham Forest. You can barely hear yourself think inside the city ground at the moment. Desperate for this second goal to try and make things a little bit more comfortable. Nico Williams, high swinging delivery. Floating out towards the edge of the box, headed away, picked up by Lewis O'Brien. Free kick given against Nottingham Forest. Declan Rice gets his hands on the ball and Forest just slow uh, everything down. Second half at the Riverside, Middlesbrough against Sheffield United, Nas Bremji. Quiet opening, Middlesbrough one, Sheffield United one, one substitution each. Rian Brewster on for Billy Sharp, Mark Buller on for Dale Fry. Nothing much happening in early stages. Middlesbrough one, Sheffield United one. Nottingham Forest fans getting excited again as they come forward. Sweeping move down the right, our knee. Plays the ball to Brennan Johnson, Jesse Lingard lurking in the middle, Johnson knocks it into the shins of Ben Johnson and behind it goes for a corner to Nottingham Forest. So in the first sort of early stages of the second half, Clinton, Forest have soaked up a bit of West Ham pressure, now they're back on the front foot. Yeah, and, that, and the fans saw that, they got behind the team, I think the Brennan Johnson disallowed goal, just, the, the temperature volume just rose in this stadium and now Forest are back on the front foot. Nottingham Forest fans feeling it, loving it, believing it at the moment, heading for a first three points of the season. Long way to go against a very experienced West Ham team. Corner for Nico Williams and away swing. Header from near Kante, a brilliant save from Fabianski, full stretch and grabs it with both hands. Yeah, good save from Fabianski. I just don't think near Kante, I think he, some, he just does enough in front. Suchek, he doesn't get enough power, but it's a good save. Declan Rice, long diagonal ball for Ben Rama to chase, just gets away from him and behind it goes uh, for the goal kick. So, yeah, sorry, I was saying about Chris Sutton's predictions column. So I managed to uh, managed to beat him in the first week. He ain't going to be happy with that, is he? Well, he's claiming he won because he got six outcomes right and I got five outcomes right, but I got two spot on. This week, he's up against Serge Pizzorno from Kasabian. Okay. And Serge leads by 10 points going into the last three predicted games of the weekend. Chris went for a 2-1 win for West Ham here. Yeah. Serge went for a 4-0 win. Well, West for Ham. West Ham. Yeah. Well, they're both going to get it wrong. I aren't think they? they might. Mangala looking to release Awanee. Cleared by four nows. Lobs it forward. Antonio chases. West Ham changes coming early in this second half. I think Dean Henderson under pressure. Double yeah, change I on the way. I think Samaka and Lanzini's coming on. Antonio on the ball, so he might not be on the field for too much longer unless David Moyes wants to go with the two up top. Cross from Antonio, misses everyone. Dean Henderson is hobbling slightly, and the ball has gone behind for a goal kick. 13 minutes gone in the second half. Nottingham Forest 1, West Ham 0. We were talking, Clinton, at the start of the game about how long it was going to take for Steve Cooper to get everything to gel and how many changes there have been. If they can get a win in the first home game of the season, that will be massive. Oh, it's going to be massive. Their home form is going to be massive, determine if they stay in the Premier League. So this will give them huge confidence moving forward. Ball forward from inside their own half. Brennan Johnson on the floor, appealing for a free kick. Play continues. Williams' ball forward is intercepted. And Nia Carte, who's got his left hand bandaged, plays it back to Scott McKenna. McKenna, in turn, comes back to his goalkeeper, Dean Henderson. Fabulous save he made right at the start of the second half to deny Thomas Socek flicks it out with his right foot so foul read it runs forward and wins the header McKenna powers a header forward into the West Ham half so foul heads to Rice very nearly gave that away to Johnson O'Brien into 
try and win a 50-50, but the ball runs to Cresswell. Approaching the last half hour of the game, and Cresswell's got space to run into down the left-hand side. Sweltering conditions on the banks of the Trent. Good skill from Ben Rama. Keeps the ball, tied to his right boot. Sliding challenge from Mangala. Hurt himself, making the foul. Free kick goes to West Ham. It's Mangala, though, who's down in pain, and this is definitely in a shooting position for it West is. Ham. I, would, I, I bet I can guarantee he might take off Lan, uh, Ben Rama. I wouldn't take off Ben Rama. I think Ben Rama's been their best attacking option. He's been more effective than Bowen. So it depends who he does. He might four take... Nows? Yeah, four nows for Lanzini and who does Samaka come on for. Does he take Antonio or does he, because they're losing, go with a two? It's a difficult decision, isn't it? Let's see. He Dave. did this on a weekend, though, against City. He took Antonio off, off after 60 yeah. minutes. So what you said earlier was a great to, point. To, to give yeah. Samaka time to... Yeah to get into the game. Looking forward to watching him. Wearing number seven for West Ham, and he's not difficult to spot. He's, he's enormous. He's a six oh, foot five inch, man, powerfully built, yeah. yeah, is, yeah. Target man, and has yeah. got the peroxide streaks uh, in the hair as well. So, can Ben Rama do something special with the free kick? Hour gone in the game. Forest fans a little nervous inside the stadium. Leading 1-0. Cresswell runs over it. Ben Rama, oh, what's good. Goal. Oh, down off the bar again. Oh. And Henderson grabs it. Referee checks his watch. It hasn't crossed the line. It's happened twice in the second half. Four nows. And now Ben Rama have hit shots that have hit the underside of the bar, come down and not cross the line. Ali, I said, what a goal. Because where, where, when he struck it, I thought Dean Henderson hasn't moved this guy in top corner. Lewis O'Brien playing it forward to Lingard. Might run for Lingard still. Rice is chasing for West Ham. Brennan Johnson can't keep it for Forrest. Four now sliding in. Heavy challenge on Nico Williams. Referee doesn't see it as a free oh. kick. Joe Worrell's been beaten. Ben Rama into the box, cuts it back. So check. Oh, it's blocked. Was that a handball? West Ham think it was a handball. McKenna's blocked it on the goal line. It's gone behind. Referee is having a word. Handball. It is here from the VAR. It's hand, if it's, it's handball, hand, it's on, red card, I and it's a penalty. I think he's by side, though, still. I don't well, think he, we yeah, need to see it on the replay. We need to see it on the replay, but they will be checking. He's he's thrown himself at it. I mean, Let's have a look. if it's hit his hand, it has to be handball. So check with the shot. McKenna is there. Oh, it's handball. Oh, it's on. handball. It's handball. That's it's going handball. in. That's yeah, going it's handball. In. It's handball. It's handball. Penalty. It is, and he probably will send him off as well. Yep. And Henderson's saving it behind. Yeah. It's not going in because he doesn't know what's behind him. But he has to do that, McKenna. It is a handball. Penalty it's, coming. It will be a penalty. Penalty coming. Last season, Manuel Lanzini, who's about to come on, took a few. Will he come on now? Would they make the change well, before? Do you remember what happened with Mark Noble against Manchester nah, United last yeah, season? I wouldn't do that. I think the penalty taker must be, who is it? Bowen or Declan Rice? Antonio. Antonio. Is it? Antonio's got the ball. Okay. Right, he don't... knows. He knows. Yeah. He's yeah. got the ball. He's going to take the yeah, penalty. He's going to have a look what? at the penalty. Hang on. I don't understand why. Why is he being sent to the monitor? <laughs> you tell me. Michael Salisbury knows. And it will be a red card. Whether, as well. whether it's whether it's that element to it that he wants the referee to have a look at yeah. to make a call. To on make the red a call card. because Henderson's behind him, isn't he? So that might be because he's preventing a goal scoring. Yeah. Henderson's behind, so they might uh, not send him. But it's definitely a penalty. I think penalty red card. I think you could be right out. Here but is go. it deliberate? Yes. It doesn't. Yes. Yeah. I think it is. Don't you? Do you? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're going across to try and slide in your hands out there. No. You think he's caught in like a goalkeeper? I think deliberate handball. Not right. quite that, but he's, <laughs> he's saved it with his hand. Yeah, yeah. Well, Michael uh, Michael Salisbury is the VAR. Robert Jones is having a look. Long Robert look Jones, at the I don't know why you're having a look, mate. It's a no. penalty. Long we, look. We can see. Where, 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 how far are we away out? About 200 yards? Yeah. Right. Points to the spot for and a penalty. Now, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Goes to his pocket, yellow car. Yeah, because Henderson's behind him. That's why. I think because Henderson's behind him, I feel because he's not denying a goal scoring opportunity because Henderson's behind him and he would save no, it. It's not, I agree with you, 100%, though, Al. He's, you're not guaranteed to yeah, save that, are I, you? I agree with you, Al, but that's why he didn't send him off. Okay. Yeah. Yellow card. David Moyes can't believe it. He wants it. I said not make the change, so we were thinking Lanzini. No. And the other thing here... It's, it's Declan Rice oh, who's going to take it. Rice yeah, he, he took ball. some last season. Yeah. And then remember, Jesse Lingard took it off him and missed. Right. <laughs> yeah. OK. Now, it's been a long time to wait. Declan Rice sensibly, actually, has taken himself away from the penalty area for quite a while while the decision what, was being made. What I will say as well, in that build-up play, by the way, Ali, yeah. ben, ben Rama was outstanding. He, he, left, yeah. he, he went past Warrell like he weren't there. And it's unfortunate for well, McKenna. If Rice misses the penalty, then McKenna's absolutely made the right decision because he's staying on Definitely, the field. Yeah. And, I mean, Henderson might have saved it, he might not. Now he's got to try and save a penalty. This 
for the equaliser. Deep breaths from Declan Rice. West Ham captain. West Ham fans behind the goal. Oh, Henderson saves it. Not a great penalty. Low to his right-hand side. McKenna gets away with the handball. It's still Forest 1, West Ham 0. No, oh, he's been brilliant, Henderson. And we spoke about him before the show. If you're going to talk, make sure you back it up. He's definitely backed it up this afternoon. Brilliant save. Poor penalty from Declan Rice, though. He, he didn't get enough power on it. All happening in the second half at the City Ground. 20 minutes gone here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Forrest early on in the second half thought they were 2-0 up. Brennan Johnson's goal rightly disallowed for offside. Scott McKenna's handball only got him a yellow card. Henderson saved the Declan Rice penalty. Henderson with a fabulous save at the start of the first half from the Socek header. Free kick Nottingham Forest. I think the David Moyes post-match interview is going to be a, an interesting one. To be fair, yeah, yeah, you're probably probably right. It will be interesting. But you can't moan about that. His team have had a penalty. They've and missed, missed a penalty. Yeah. Yeah. Lanzini was three out of three last season, but obviously mm. about to come on as a sub. As Antonio, I've seen take him and score. Yeah, but you're right, I've seen Rice take him and yeah, score exactly. as well. But, but Mark Noble, obviously, had he been here, had he been on the field, was always Mr. Reliable for West Ham. Now they've got defending to do. Some game this has been. <laughs> And it's still, it's still yeah. 25 minutes to go. That's right. Williams with the free kick. Oh, uh, oh. our knee. The ball hits him on the left foot and rolls into the arms of Fabianski. And it, he just didn't get a proper strike on it. It hit him. A bit like the goal he scored. It hit him. Rolled gently towards the goal line. Fabianski makes the comfortable save. Yeah, he's a good ball in. He can't sort his feet out and the touch is poor. But another great opportunity for Forrest. And I think it was, it might have been, I think maybe Nakate, the centre half it was. So 25 minutes to play Forest 1 West Ham 0 ball breaks to Jesse Lingard inside the Forest half support from Lewis O'Brien full of energy so foul slips O'Brien goes right past him curling cross comes in Declan Rice having missed the penalty back there doing everything he can for West Ham wins the header falls at the feet of Ben Rama Ben Rama plays it infield to Rice Rice right in the middle of his own half sees so foul in space and this is where stamina, energy, endurance is really going to play a part. Boiling hot day. 25 minutes to go. West Ham still waiting to make the double change. Scamacca and Lanzini, the Italian and Argentine, waiting to come on. Here's Fornals, cross in. There's uh, Niacate again to win the header. Strength from Awani. Awani with his right foot plays it to Lingard. Lingard on the dribble, takes the ball up to the halfway line, pass Sofal, Sofal puts an arm out and blocks him, Lingard doesn't get the decision, Sofal collects himself, plays it down the right, Antonio, first touch, knocks it into the body of Niacate, turns Niacate, has to leave him alone, Antonio still going left-footed shot, brilliant block by McKenna, so McKenna having made the save with his arm and stayed on the field then makes a really important block from Antonio he needs to be careful in the Akate because he gets too tight Antonio wants to feel you so if he wants to feel you he'll roll you because he's too he's stronger than the Akate. good play from Antonio maybe he should have slipped it to Jared Bowen but I know what it's like being a striker in that position Ali you want to get your first goal Cresswell curling ball down the left hand side Forest fans love it, it's gone straight out of play, double substitution coming, water break coming as well. Let's get an update on the Super League action this afternoon, Hull against St Helens, Dave Woods. Hull 6, St Helens 6, Hull's response provided by Will Hoffawati, finishing off a Conrad Herald break down the outside, making some kick the goal from the touchline, 6-6 six, six here. The other game, Wakefield lead Wigan by 8 points to nil. Thank you, Dave. Uh, double change being made by West Ham. Let's check in at the Riverside, Naz Premji. Middles for one, Sheffield United won a few moments ago. Rianne Brewster glancing, had a lovely stop from Zach Steffen to turn it behind. Middles for one, Sheffield United won. Any goals at Ewood Park yet? Kicked off at three o'clock. Blackburn, West Brom, Lee Blakeman. None yet, Ali, but West Brom have had another good chance to open the scoring. This time, cross in from the right, found Grady D and Garner, unmarked, back post, free header, and he put it wide, still somehow Blackburn nil West Brom nil right four nows Antonio off a Skimaka and Lanzini on for West Ham who at the moment are heading for two defeats out of two at the start of the season have European football to think about this week as well Thursday night they play the Danes Viborg at home they've got defending to think about as well right now cross into their penalty area Socek leaps clears the ball on the volley with his left foot Hearts won Dundee United nil talking European football 
horrible week for Dundee United. Hammered 7-0 by AZ Alkmaar this week. 1-0 down away to Hearts, who finished third last season in the Scottish Premiership. Celtic 5-0 winners uh, at Kilmarnock. Standing ovation, lovely, from the Nottingham Forest fans, Clinton, for Mikhail Antonio. One yeah. season here, but had a great season. Oh, he was a very effective here. He helped them massively, and it's brilliant. And he applauds them. He's like that anyway, Mick. Mick's one of the best guys around and enjoys his football, and I'm glad he's clapped them and applauded them. Skamaka lays the ball off to Lingard outside of his right foot first time looking for our knee. Zuma gets there first plays it back uh, to Fabianski Fabianski all in yellow wax it away with his right foot blimey McKenna was up early there got to be careful on the yellow card out it goes for a West Ham throw goal at the Riverside Nas middles for one Sheffield United two comical own goal cut back from Njai and Ryan Giles has hammered the ball past his own goalkeeper middles for one Sheffield United two water break and again applause around the ground standing ovation from the Nottingham Forest fans real drama this afternoon but at the moment Clinton 20 minutes away from a first Premier League win this season, leading West Ham by a goal to nil. While we've got a moment, let's just discuss that key moment again. So McKenna jumps to block the shot with his arm. Now he throws his body at it. His arm is just where it is. It hits his arm and Henderson might make the save behind him. I, 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 I think thought the, it was going to be a red card. The only card. reason I don't think they give it a red card because he's not, he fully doesn't stick. His hand's there and he's not fully trying so, to save it like that. If he was on the line and he saves it like that, he's going to send him off. Listen, I yeah. agree with you. I so, think it should have been a sending off. Right. But I think they look at that, that he's, he doesn't know that it's hit his arm. And then they look that Henderson's behind him. But yeah. I agree. Because yeah. if I'm playing, I think he should be sent so, off. So we're not, so we're saying not a deliberate yeah, attempt not a to deliberate. A, yeah, that's what, so I, that's what I think. I think he knows that's yeah. anyway. Yeah, anyway, anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know anyway. what you mean though. I know yeah. exactly what you mean now. Pretty sure John Murray's not wearing shorts at Stamford Bridge, but he's got the team news John <laughs> correct on both points uh, the news on Chelsea is that they are going to give a first start to their biggest signing of the summer so far Mark Kukurea Loftus Cheek also comes in for Chilwell and Aspilicueta who are both on the bench so Jorginho is captain today and Tottenham are unchanged after their impressive start last weekend so if Richarlison makes his debut today it will be as a substitute no shorts John surprised at that no, well, our standards. We still have some standards. I like it, mate. I like it. <laughs> Goal scorers coming up for Nottingham Forest. Thank you, John. John, alongside former England international Matt Ups, and it's going to be some listen that as well this afternoon on Five Lives Premier League Sunday. Chelsea against Tottenham. Taiwo Awanii signed in the summer from Union Berlin gets a standing ovation, a high five from the manager, replaced by Sam So, I mean, not only did he get the goal, Clinton, that was a really good centre-forwards performance, wasn't it? Oh, really. Zuma and Johnson will know they've been in the game. He was outstanding. He worked the line. He held the ball up. Listen, he's still a bit raw. It's going to take time to adjust to the Premier League, but he can be happy with his home debut. And getting that first goal at your club so early, Ali, will give him confidence moving forward. How nervous are Forrest going to get? Leading 1-0, 18 minutes to play. A lot of football left. Here's Cresswell on the ball for West Ham. Declan Rice missing the penalty for them. Henderson guessing right. It wasn't the most powerfully struck. It was heading for the corner, but whenever I commentate with Pat Nevin, he always says it about penalties. If the goalkeeper goes the right way, it's got to be the perfect strike right into the corner at pace. Otherwise, you're not going to beat them. Uh, here's Mangala for Nottingham Forest. Across to Toffolo. Back to McKenna. McKenna, high ball, Surridge wins his first header, Zuma's underneath it, volleys it away, Declan Rice twists his body, nods it to Sofal, Sofal makes a little run down the right, Skamaka with the first time ball. See, I'm surprised now, I thought he would have kept Antonio on with him, yeah. especially when you're losing. Yeah. I know, like, maybe he might have had his best game, but he's effective, and I think that both of them could have caused problems, but, you know what, David Moyes sees him day to day, we don't. <laughs> West Ham with Lanzini. So Lanzini slotted into that four nows roll. Here's Jared Bowen. Comes herring in off the right. Ball at his feet. Pass back to Declan Rice inside the centre circle. Forrest having to deal without the ball for a while here. Lanzini drops deep to get it going. Ben Rama stayed out there as Clinton Morrison felt he should have. Been impressive for West Ham. Here he is on the ball, gets it from Cresswell, works it onto his right foot just outside the penalty area on the left. Forrest 1, West Ham 0. Lanzini's curling pass, bounces three times, reaches Sofal. Sofal, high cross, poor cross. Behind it goes for a goal kick to Nottingham Forest. And uh, Forrest held their shape well. 
they have to be fair and it's gone a bit flat for West Ham since they've made them substitutions and the drink break it's gone they want to lift it again and I think soon he'll have to bring on Maxwell Corner I just think they need a different dimension up there and you know he can score a goal from yep. his time at Burnley that's right goal kick then for Nottingham Forest leading by goal to nil Dean Henderson taking his time referee get well okay I don't mind that actually gives him a yellow card I, I just think that nips that in the bud straight away yeah definitely. the one I think is if he pushes it again now thinking well he's not going to send me off one day they're going to do that I agree it will happen one day for sure and that will stop the time wasting so let's let's see how that progresses Dean Henderson on a yellow Scott McKenna on a yellow for the handball that led to the penalty saved by Henderson Headed away by Ben Johnson for West Ham. Nico Williams nods it forward. Surridge tries to flick it over the head of Rice and pick it up the other side. Rice is too strong, too wise for that. Gets his body in the way. Cresswell's high ball downfield. Oh, Skamaka's got away here from Niakate into the penalty area. Turns, has support, holds on to it. Goes for the shot himself. Ben Rama wanted the pass. The shot's blocked and it runs back to Cresswell someone's struggling Neil Carte's just signaled to the bench he has to come off Ben Rama cross comes in that is a blow for Nottingham Forest it's deflected Joe Worrell stretches gets a boot on it here comes the change Neil Carte's down had a fabulous battle with Antonio this afternoon that is going to have to be a change so Nottingham Forest wait to make that change 15 minutes to play Forest 1 West Ham nil. Match of the day two, Clinton at half past ten is going to be a good watch for oh, this game. Definitely, yeah, this game has been excellent. And then got Chelsea and Tottenham after. That's a that's a brilliant game as well. Now two really good games this weekend. Monday night club uh, tomorrow night. That will have updates uh, of Liverpool against Crystal Palace into the show. Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage taking the calls on. 6.06 uh, tonight, so lines will be open from about half time in our Chelsea Tottenham uh, commentary 08085 909 693. Just in case you need to scribble that down. And Football Daily Podcast. If you missed anything today, it's always there for you. The interviews, the reaction, the debates, the talking points with the uh, the biggest names and the biggest stories uh, available on the BBC Sounds app. So near Carte down. You know what? Oh, I said it because oh, I went into Forest last season. Steve Cooper. I said to him, what is it with all these? They have 50 million staff here. And what do every <laughs> staff do? Do you know what I mean? Oh, Are you trying I to get a job? Get yeah, I was like, you, can just, you might as well let me do what they're yeah. doing. <laughs> Steve Cook is getting ready to come on. Now, he... So he's like, Cook is very experienced, but very. not as mobile. Correct. As, not as mobile. Yeah. So that, but he is experienced, really good. But it looks like he might be all right. It might have been a touch of cramp. Because they're not making it yet. They're still telling Steve Cook to go okay. warm up. Yeah, good point. So, so Steve Cook's got the white bib on. He wasn't involved at all uh, on the opening weekend uh, of the season. But as Clinton says, hugely experienced defender. 11 seasons with Bournemouth. Five of those in the Premier League. Over 150 Premier League appearances under his belt. And played an important part in the promotion push towards the end of last season. Right, I think they are going to have to make the change. Steve Cooper's calling Steve Cook. I don't think they think. Surely he must have known when he yeah. went off. To, I don't know why he's attempted to try and come back on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it? here we go. He's going down. Okay. Nia Carte hey, coming off, Steve not, Cook coming on. He's not happy, David Moyes. And I make him right. Because if he was injured over there and you're coming on and you're going back down again, I, would, I wouldn't be happy with him. David Moyes is going to have a few gripes, isn't he, at the end of today. So West Ham goal ruled out in the first half. Antonio's push on. Uh, Mangala, we yes. think was the right decision. Yeah, of course it was, yeah. And then the McKenna handball only getting a yellow card. OK, Declan Rice missed the penalty. I wonder whether David Moyes will argue. Possibly Forrest should have played the rest of the game with 10 men. We'll wait and see. Post-match reaction to come. Near Carte, great game for him. But he's coming off. Steve Cook is coming on. And Forrest have just over 10 minutes to try and see this out. Now, yesterday, Clinton, uh, I was at the St Mary's Stadium. Oh, what Leeds, a game. Leeds United led 2-0 and they couldn't see it out. And Jesse Marsh said to me at the end of the game that Leeds didn't have the maturity yeah. to see the game out. And that, that's what this is going to be a test of here for Forrest. Yeah, so bringing it? on someone like Cook, who has got the experience, will help massively. But, yeah, that was a hell of a game, that out. Yeah. That 2-0, I thought it was yeah. all over. Yeah, and Credit I Southampton. I interviewed Ralph Harsnoodle after the game and obviously he was delighted with the fight, but he was absolutely livid. I don't know if you saw the story that appeared last week about, yeah, about some of his pl senior players. Senior players pushing, oh, he him, yeah. was fuming someone's obviously there's always one person yeah. who's not happy probably not playing yeah. leaked it although although Ralph Harsnoodle was making the point you know 
um, he, he, he felt the, the story was, was incorrect. Oh, OK, fair So, right. But, yeah, um, yeah he, was, he was quite strong post-match. Third answer, actually, there was a swear word in there that we uh, oh, that okay. we had to cut out. But he wasn't swearing at me. I no, think no, just, no. You know, well, sometimes they heat at a moment. These things can happen. <laughs> Uh, we have got just over 10 minutes to go. Here come Forrest, looking to try and kill the game. Brennan Johnson wide on the right, Surridge in the middle. Ben Johnson does well, gets his body in the way, arms by his side, blocks the cross, and behind it goes for the corner. Corner will come in from the right. Nico Williams will take it for Nottingham Forest. Still throwing some bodies forward. Steve Cook just on a centre-back, is on the edge of the area. Brennan Johnson's in the six-yard box, and he's got about six West Ham defenders going zonal for company. Scott McKenna's going to make a run from the edge of the box, so is Surridge. In front of the Trent end, an away swinger from Williams. Ball is headed down. Declan Rice immediately it bounces in front of him, just clears it with his left foot. Dean Henderson's almost on the halfway line. Hoists it high in the air. The ball disappears from our view because the low roof of the Peter Taylor stand and the TV gantry blocks us. Cresswell underneath it, knocks it out for a throw. And that's, that's a good example of Forrest here, just, just managing the game, win the throw, keep the ball in West Ham's half, run the clock down. Yeah, it went pretty from Henderson, but he's not going to try and play there. It was the right decision. Attendance 29,281 this afternoon, and most of them at the moment in the red and white are going home happy. Cross in from the right-hand side. It's going to be a I was their day for the Nottingham Forest fans. Whatever the result, actually, Nottingham Forest back in the top flight. First home game in the top flight of English football this century. At the moment, they are leading it by a goal to nil. Lanzini's on the ball, though. Always dangerous for West Ham. Wide to Ben Rama. He's been a real threat. Dribbling inside the penalty area in his green boots. Lays it off to Lanzini. Little flick over the top. Cresswell had to stop his run. Couldn't go for that ball. Knew he was offside, and Ben Rama couldn't get to the one-two goal kick for Forrest. Yeah, it's poor from Lanzini, to be fair. Really poor. He's got better quality than that. West Ham haven't been good enough in the final third this afternoon so far. Uh, here's the official explanation for there not being a red card. And Clinton spot on. Goalkeeper Dean Henderson behind the defender. Handball is not denying the goal. Oh, yeah. Because Henderson... He was literally right behind said, him, yeah. yeah. Could have, I know what you mean. It, it could have, have hit gone, him and gone in, though. It could have done a David De Gea and gone through him, so you just never yeah. know, do you? So but that's, that's the laws. Yeah, that I is get the it. law. Yeah. I get it. I get it. And you were right. Uh, goal at Ewood Park, Lee Blakeman. Goal for Blackburn. Blackburn 1, West Brom 0 against the run of play. Britton Diaz to the edge of the area. Left-footed curler, bottom corner. Great strike. Blackburn 1, West Brom 0. So as it stands, Blackburn heading to the top of the championship, having started with wins against QPR and Swansea. They would move above Hull and Watford. Here's Ben Rama again at pace down the left, taking on Williams. Williams slides in doesn't get the decision he was claiming goal kick that's a corner for West Ham Ben Rama having won it tucks the ball under his arm runs right over there slams the ball down in the quadrant but then decides to leave it to Aaron Cresswell to take it a few boos and jeers around the stadium as Cresswell bounces the ball places it very carefully on the edge of the quadrant eight minutes plus added time remaining at the city ground Forest one West Ham nil, Maxwell Cornet getting ready to make a debut for West Ham. Scored nine goals for Burnley last season. Cresswell's delivery, in it comes. Zuma with the header, blocked on the line. And brilliant. then it hits Skamaka and comes off him. In fact, comes off a Forest defender and it goes behind the corner. It's Nico Williams. Zuma gets up and Nico Williams is brilliant. And you're told that in the near post. When it goes over your head, react and get on the post. Brilliant defending from Nico Williams. Wow. Again, West Ham denied at the very last there certain goal brilliant defending from Williams knocked it into a teammate and behind it went for a corner seven minutes and counting a lot of wrestling on the edge of the box Cresswell's delivery Zuma's down claiming a penalty inside the box play continues Ben Johnson heads the bouncing ball forward Skimaka being wrestled on the edge of the box but actually the free kick has gone to Nottingham Forest and they can take a bit more time out of the game and they're going to make another change the Portuguese Cafu we're in number 18, getting the final instructions from Steve Cooper, Maybe going Jesse, out there to try and shut things down. Maybe Jesse Lingard, and this goal to the three in the midfield, but the defence, yeah, look at this. Oh yeah, there's a big thingy. Oh, it's not Lingard, it's Mangala. Been good in there, he's been good in there, Ali. Yeah, first start for the club for Orel Mangala. Came in for Jack Colback this afternoon, applauded off the field as well. And those were the two changes made to the starting lineup today. Mangala and Awanee starting for Nottingham Forest, and both have played huge parts in the game. 
Cafu is on. Yeah. What a name. On he comes, another goal at the Riverside, and that's Premji. Middlesbrough level, Middlesbrough 2, Sheffield United 2, corner floated in, Ryan Giles it was with the delivery, flicked header on and flicked header in from Tuberakpom. Middlesbrough 2, Sheffield United 2. Six minutes remaining, Nottingham Forest 1, West Ham 0. Another try in the Super League, Hull, St Helens, Dave Woods. A hole 6, St Helens 10, Saints in the lead for the first time, Tommy Makinson with a skiddy finish in the corner, just got over the line. He's kicked the goal as well, 6-10 here, Wakefield are leading Wigan, 6 nil in the other game. Thanks Dave. Cricket commentary by the way continues on Radio 5 Sports Extra in the women's hundred it's Oval Invincibles against Southern Brave on Sports Extra at the moment. The men's game which started at half past two the Northern Superchargers against London Spirit you can actually watch uh, on BBC Two Sports Extra will then have the men's invincibles uh, against Brave. Cornet's on. Yeah and Jared Bowen's gone off. Thank you yeah. very much indeed. Well spotted. Maybe you could do a job for, for Steve Cooper's team with No, uh, no, Sharp I'm happy to like hear work oh, yeah? with you. I don't Good want man. to be there. No Good. way. <laughs> We've got Clinton for another season. Exactly, Very pleased to hear yeah. it. Uh, five minutes to go. Forrest closing in on the win. Leading 1-0. Awanee with a scruffy finish just before half-time. West Ham have had a goal disallowed. West Ham have missed a penalty. Forrest have had a goal disallowed. West Ham get a goal kick. Forrest thought they'd won a corner. Jesse Lingard does that thing you're taught to do from a very young age picks the ball up and then just casually flicks it behind him as he runs away to try and run down a few more seconds it's frustrating when you're losing oh, so you, annoying you do want to go over I, I, I watch I watch my I watch the nine year olds yeah. ten year olds do it you're like oh, oh guys, come yeah, on exactly where have they got that from I wonder <laughs> Fabianski I don't do it in the back garden Clinton no, 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 no. No. <laughs> so foul volleys it forward O'Brien plays it into the West Ham half players dripping in sweat it's been really hard work this afternoon Forrest have got five minutes of the 90 plus a bit of added time to try and see this through Declan Rice brings it forward for West Ham curling ball into the penalty area dive header away from Toffolo Rice is there again out wide it goes to Lanzini sees the little run from Ben Rama Ben Rama takes it away from Nico Williams back to Cresswell down the line to Ben Rama Ben Rama with the cut back here Stretching challenge, cleared by Steve Cook, flick on one by Brennan Johnson, who thought he might have won this game in the second half with his goal. That was ruled out for offside. Not over yet. Chelsea Tottenham to come here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Full commentary. Game kicks off at half past four. Declan Rice. Down the line it goes again to Ben Rama. Back onto the right foot. In comes the cross just beyond Skamaka. He's the target. Couldn't quite find him. Henderson makes the catch. Yeah, Henderson's been brilliant. It's got to be something good to beat Dean Henderson. I think he's been really assured. And he must have known we were talking about him before because he's, he's been excellent. Yeah, on loan from Manchester United this season. One of the, uh, I've lost count, was it 15, did I say? 15, yeah, 15 you said, yeah, 15. 15 signings, one of whom has already gone out on loan. But 14 who could potentially be involved in first team action for Nottingham Forest. Eight of them starting this game today. Sheku Kuyate, Emmanuel Dennis have both joined. Another story I saw today was Hussein Mawar of Lyon. another one uh, they're being linked with. Mawar, Mawar's a player, by Mawar. the way. Wow, Mawar. if he comes Mawar. here, he'll be a good player. <laughs> Neil Mopa is another one. Uh, but uh, then I think you're top heavy up front, aren't you? Yeah. With that? They only play one up front, but yeah. you need competition for places. And then you've got Awani and Awar. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's going to be fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be lovely, yeah. that. Toffolo, good turn from Brennan Johnson, at speed into the box, nearly stumbles, low ball, Fabianski sticks out a left hand, Surridge was hoping for the rebound and Fabianski is able to gather it in. We are into the 88th minute of the game, Forest 1, West Ham 0, Declan Rice still running things for West Ham, driving them forward, looks for Sofal, Sofal gets to it just in time, wide to Cornet, Cornet with the uh, hair in short dreads, tied up, Bouncing around on the back of his head. Ball given away here by Lanzini. Forrest possibly could kill it on the counter. Cafu, nice ball forward to Brennan Johnson. One on one here with Ben Johnson. Goes for the low cross, blocked by the West Ham defender. Williams is there, wins it back for Forrest. Johnson, Brennan Johnson against Lanzini. Down to the corner flag he goes, trying to run out the time. Ball hits his right boot, goes behind for the goal kick. Clinton. Yeah, too early for that, I think. I think try and go and get a second goal. I, I, I don't mind when it's in stoppage time, but now I think it's just too early there. He had a chance. He was one on one with Lanzini. 89th minute of the game. Nervous tension abounds inside the city ground. It's going to be some noise on the full time whistle if they get the win, but it's not done yet. And I know there'll be people listening nervously, Forest fans up and down the country, those 
who weren't able to be in the stadium this afternoon. Cresswell's curling ball. Forrest won an offside against Ben Rama. The fans do anyway. Ben Rama running at Worrell. Has the beating of Worrell. Forced away from goal. Lays it off here. Lanzini with the drive. Hits the back of Worrell and goes behind for a West Ham corner. He's been the most lively, Ben Rama. He's tried to make stuff happen on that left-hand side. I, I think he's been good. He's been really unlucky not to get on the score sheet as well. 90th minute of the game. Then a bit of added time. Forrest won West Ham nil. David Moyes can't look at the moment. West Ham corner, yet another set piece for Nottingham Forest to defend. Skamaka looking for his first goal for the club. Stands tall on the edge of the six-yard box. A couple of West Ham players right on the goal line. There's the delivery from Cresswell. Hits Socek on the heel. Almost attempts the scorpion kick there. Goes thumping to the ground and behind it goes for the goal kick to Nottingham Forest. Yeah, it's good defending from Toffolo because it's a mismatch. Suchek giving him a few, he's way bigger than him, but really good defending from Toffolo and Suchek, yeah, he's not been at his best today because he's another one who could add a couple of goals. Goal kick then for Nottingham Forest. Dean Henderson taking his time. Waves the players forward in the red and white. Into added time we go. Seven minutes. Seven minutes of added time. Plenty of football still to be played. Henderson with his right foot, clears downfield. Surridge acrobatically tries to keep it in play. Comes off his left boot, goes out for a throw to West Ham. They've still got time. Steve Cooper complains. So far was stealing yards. Referee agrees, he sends him back. Ten yards short of the halfway line on the right-hand side. Six and a half minutes to go. Skamaka wins the header, flicks on looking for Corne. Corne runs hard. Cook had a head start, gets there first for Forrest, plays it back to Henderson, lets that run all the way back to the byline, slightly slices the clearance, and now it goes for a throw into West Ham, wide on the left. They've had their chances, two balls on the field at the moment, so we're going to have to have a stoppage in play. They've got rid of one, Cresswell gets ready to take the throw. Goal disallowed for West Ham for an Antonio foul. Declan Rice with the missed penalty. Ben Rama's down. He's got to pick himself up. You've got no time to feel sorry for yourself, mate. Your team's losing. Cresswell getting ready to take another throw for West Ham. Midway inside the Forest half on the left. And the Forest player goes down. That's Nico Williams, who seems to be in some trouble. He's rolled onto his left-hand side. He's got his head buried in the crook of his arm. West Ham thinking he's making a meal of it. Six and a half minutes, maybe six minutes of added time to play. Referees stop the watch. West Ham getting frustrated. Forrest leading them by a goal to nil. And still those fans, you can see everyone with those programmes and placards in the sunshine flapping furiously. They don't, if they go home with three points, they won't be up bothered about the heat, would no. they? Have? <laughs> Nottingham Forest, their next game, Everton away. And as I said, West Ham midweek, Viborg from Denmark at home uh, in the Europa Conference League playoff. West Ham, of course, semi-finalists in the Europa League uh, last season, just pipped by Eintracht Frankfurt in that semi-final, who went on to beat Rangers in the final. Zuma's floated ball, looks like a good one. So fouls there, awkward control for him on the bounce. So Toffolo is able to run to his left, knocked off balance by Corne, but sensibly Corne didn't foul there, just let the ball go out for the throw. It feels quiet, it feels nervous, doesn't it? Does it does nervous, the when the seven minutes goes up, it does make you nervous, most two, definitely. Two, two minutes of it gone, five minutes remaining. So foul throw, Forrest leading 1-0. Headed away by Cafu, Brennan Johnson leaps for a header just short of the halfway line, Ben Johnson wins it, Worrell's header, Surridge, Flicks it over the top, Lingard chases, Ben Johnson's there, bouncing ball, nods it back to Fabianski. Fabianski with his right arm, bowls it out to the left to Aaron Cresswell. And here's Declan Rice. Rice, steaming forward across the halfway line, onto Cresswell, wide to Ben Rama, thought about the early ball, Rice had made the run, here comes the cross from That's Ben poor. Rama, not a good one. It's poor from Ben Rama, it's not even, it's not an angle to, Forrest have got a really good line, just keep moving the ball across and they get a better angle so you're further up the pitch, but credit our to Forrest, it's a really good line. Forrest fans trying to sing their team to the finish line now. These two teams have not been in the same division since 2012. That was back in the championship. West Ham under Sam Allardyce did the double over Forrest that season. Last time Forrest hosted West Ham in a top flight game was back in 1998. That was a nil-nil draw. Harry Redknapp in charge of West Ham, that shows the passing of time. Dave Bassett was the Forest manager that day. And Nottingham Forest have only won two of the last 21 league games against West Ham. 
drawing eight and losing 11. Heading for the win at the moment, but still four minutes to go. And West Ham press in the black shirts. Ball with Ben Rama wide on the left. Finds Rice, edge of the box. Rice tries to work it onto his right foot. Wall of red in front of him. Turns away from Lingard. Back to Ben Rama, who's got the skills. Nico Williams stands in front of him with his hands behind his back. Cross in from Rice. Skamaka chests it down, looking for someone to run onto it. No one there. Cresswell was actually the closest to him. Yeah, that's a defender who's not realising that the centre forward's knocking it down from him. He's running away from goal. It was good play from Skamaka. Got an Antonio on, for example. That's Possibly I mean. could have been on the wavelength. Yeah, and I don't know what that is from Ben Johnson, by the way. They are missing players, though. They need a bonner back, they need Dawson back, because I think at centre-half, they are struggling in their areas. Ben Johnson and Zuma, the centre-back pairing today. Yeah, Dawson out, Ogbonna out. Aguerd as well, they signed for big money. Yeah, yeah, he's had an operation. He got injured, yeah, yeah injured in pre-season. Forest fans now on their feet. Rhythmic hand-clapping with three minutes to go. Lewis O'Brien gets man of the match. Stats go up on the screen. Passing accuracy, top of the list. Possession one, top of the list. Tackles, top of the list. He's like, you can sign all these two free midfielders that are coming in, but I'm here to stay. <laughs> right, how long have we got? I think we've got two minutes left now. Two minutes for West Ham to try and find an equaliser, having missed a penalty in this second half. Dean Henderson with the crucial save, low to his right. Lanzini looking for the through ball to Cornet. Dealt with for now. Sofal races forward for West Ham. Forrest leading by a goal to nil. Taiwo Awanii with the scramble goal just before half-time. Socek on the ball in the inside right channel. Plays it down the line for Corne. So foul with the high dipping cross. Williams leaps and heads it away. Lingard with a little flick on. So foul will chase that. 90 seconds to go. Nottingham Forest in this first home game in the top flight this century. First home game of the season. 90 seconds away, less now from three points in the bag. Ben Johnson plays it to his left. Nervous whistles around us in the Peter Taylor stand. Cresswell with the floated ball. Corne heads it down into the forest box. Steve Cook, no nonsense defending, clears it first time with his left foot. Zuma chests it down. Into the forest half it goes. Volleyed forward by Cafu, then Br Brennan Johnson. Surridge battling for it, wins a free kick. So fouls fouled him minute to play just 50 seconds that could be that yeah I don't, you know since he's had his injuries so far i don't think he's been the same player he was a marauding right back could go past a lot of people i just don't think he's the same player that he used to be but good play from Sturridge holding the ball up so free kick nottingham forest west ham complaining about time wasting vladimir sofal is shaking his head at the decision nottingham forest fans getting ready to explode with joy the substitutes behind Steve Cooper, waiting to race onto the field. Yes, it's only three points, but for Nottingham Forest, as a football club and the fans, it's a whole lot more than that this afternoon. Oh, it's 23 years of wait, isn't it? It is 23 years of wait. My stopwatch says 10 seconds and a little bit to go. The ball has gone out for a throw into West Ham. They're almost there, Nottingham Forest. Brennan Johnson He'll tries to kick the replacement ball away that was sitting on the little white plastic cone. Steve Cooper still desperately waving his arms, trying to get his players in the right spots. Referee has a look at the watch. Throwing I think for West there's Ham. about 30 seconds to go. Do Remember, you? Nico Wick Williams went down. Okay. Doing it. Fabianski under pressure, clears with his right foot. No sign of the full-time whistle just yet. The Forest subs are pleading for it. Surridge on the ball for Forest. Heads it down the left, chased it by Sofal. Takes it down to the corner flag. This is the time just to Ryan run it down. Socek barges into him, no free kick given. Ball still in play. Throw in one by West Ham. A little bit of argy-bargy. Sofal unhappy with Surridge. Surridge gets away from the situation. Picks up a yellow card for his involvement in that. And the referee just says to everyone, calm down, we're not there just yet. We have played almost eight minutes of added time. No, 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 it's not. He was still, he was still putting the, um, the, the, the um, Sam Sturridge's name in the book and they took the throw on. So, yeah, not yet. I just... I 10 more that. seconds. <laughs> I knew that. I was just building, Clinton. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was just building. I didn't have a clue. I'd gone with the Forest here fans. Is. Next time he kicks it up here, it should be blown. Last chance there for go. West Ham. And there it is. Roars of jubilation inside the city ground. A first home game in the top flight this century. And they've got the win against a very good West Ham team. David Moyes will have his complaints. Declan Rice with the penalty saved by Dean Henderson. They also had a goal ruled out by Saeed Benrahma for a foul by Mikhail Antonio. 
But let's give the credit to Nottingham Forest. The goal scorer, Taiwo Awanee, with the goal late in the first half to give them a hugely famous win. And Steve Cooper is out there. He's embracing Jesse Lingard. He's given him a massive bear hug. It's a huge win for Nottingham uh, Forest. It's a big result. And yeah, Coops will he'll lap up this atmosphere. And he does his little fist pumps. You'll see it in a minute to the crowd. But it's brilliant. Fantastic result. The atmosphere's been outstanding. And they thoroughly deserved it, Forest. Listen, they needed their goalie. And that's why you bring Quali in to make two outstanding saves. West Ham will be disappointed. Declan Rice missed the penalty. This will our goal from Ben Rama but I think Forrest maybe just shaded it overall and deserved the three points. Big noise, big result, a very big day for Nottingham Forest Football Club. Full-time score in the sunshine at the city ground. Nottingham Forest 1, West Ham 0.